We're going to run the football. Well, the word balance is new in, La in Laramie this year. Mr. Excitement is Mike Jenkins. He's a guy who can run the football, catch the football, and return kicks. He leads the whack right now in scoring. His tailback mate is Marcus, Marcus Brigham, who has rushed for over 300 yards in four games so far this year. Well, Dana Dimmel's made some bold predictions this week, giving Colorado some bulletin board material. This game could turn out to be a war. We'll return to Folsom Field in Boulder, Colorado, after this word from Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. These days, it seems like everything is the official something of somebody. What's next? The official soft drink? The team mascot? Look at this guy right here. And this one here. And this girlfriend and this kid. See? See, they're drinking Dr. Pepper just because it tastes great. It's kind of the official soft drink of everyone else. Like this guy with the bratwurst. He executes a one-handed switch. You can't coach this stuff. It's a thing of beauty. Hey, who's doing that? I do that. What's going on? Hey. Performance, it's my job. You need the right technology. You need the right skills. You need the right equipment. You need the right gasoline. And you need the right motor oil. You need to use your nine iron. Good thing he can drive. Sitco says... This simple-looking device is the key to unlock your body's hidden potential. It can change the look and shape of every line and curve on your body. Because it's the weight, the challenge, and the secret behind one of the most effective fitness machines in the world. Introducing the Bowflex Power Pro. Bowflex uses patented power rod resistance to give you an incredibly smooth, natural feel for over 60 different health club quality exercises. With features like a built-in aerobic rowing exercise, convertible grips, and convenient folding capabilities, it's easy to see why a Bowflex was selected by Fitness Magazine as the best home gym for 1997 and was awarded a Consumer's Digest Best Buy. It's time to get the body you want with no money down and payments as low as $33 a month. Call right now for your free video and brochure. Discover the body you've always wanted with the Bowflex Power Pro. Welcome back to Boulder, Colorado, where we are minutes away from kickoff between Colorado and Wyoming. Hello, everyone. I'm Jim Knox, and this will be an interesting day in college football as the four youngest head coaches will be matched up against each other. This afternoon, right here at Folsom Stadium, it will be the youngest head coach, 34-year-old Dana Dimble in Wyoming, going against the fourth youngest head coach, Rick Neuheisel in Colorado. Then this evening, it will be Ron Cooper of Louisville against John Blake and the Oklahoma Sooners. So this afternoon in Boulder, it's not only two outstanding teams going at it, it's two outstanding young coaches. It's Wyoming and Colorado, the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Game of the Week, coming your way up next. Pizza Hut, Hut, Hut. UPN 20 and Pizza Hut have got your chance to win a Big 12 pizza party. To enter, just order a Pizza Hut pizza or visit any Pizza Hut for your official entry blank. Send entries to Big 12 Pizza Party, care of UPN 20, P.O. Box 6522, Englewood, Colorado, 80111. Each week, one lucky winner will win a pizza party in their home. One grand prize winner will receive a College Bowl pizza party and a 27-inch color television. Have a pizza party. Send in your entry today. Brought to you by Pizza Hut and UPN 20. All right, Shaggy, let's pretend. This is Mile High Stadium. This is all the tailgaters and their 4x4s, you know, uh, hamburgers, brats. And then you drive in with your date in a tiny hatchback that'll hold nothing more than a big gulp and a couple of ham sandwiches. Is there any way to impress your date? I mean, you blow it like the Broncos at the Super Bowl. So what are you going to do? Go to Rocky's Autos? Precisely. Visit Colorado's number one auto dealership, Rocky's Autos, with the largest selection of 4x4s. But hurry, they won't last forever. Now let's get out of here before the boss sees his desk. Visit Rocky's at 63rd and Federal for Colorado's largest selection of trucks. It's a fully loaded citrus soda with carbos. Beat the rush. Michael, you're going to be late for work. No. You know, we're just looking out for you. It's important to be prompt. All right. Hey, don't forget your hat. Oh, thanks, Dad. We love you. 
I love you, too. Thanks for waiting. You know Pizza Hut gives you 50% more toppings than Domino's. Now a medium's just $8.99, and a second's Hi, five bucks. Dad, I forgot my... My poem. Pizza Hut now accepts all major credit cards, so call today. Today's game is brought to you by Pizza Hut. Consecutive homecoming games, looking to make it 14 against Wyoming. First time in a long time, they begin the year at 3-1. and one. Perfect day for football. 79 degrees, just a few wispy clouds in the sky, the wind swirling around. Expecting it to gust a little bit later this afternoon. Right now, it's west-northwest out of 15. And you take a look at the series between these two teams. Colorado has only lost twice. Both of those losses, however, came here in Boulder, Colorado. Wyoming's last win, 1982, right here in Folsom Field. Now, Colorado won the toss. And as uh, Dana Dimmel told us yesterday, he's yet to win a toss this year. He's 0-5. Colorado has deferred, so that'll allow Jason Leslie to kick it away. And I think one of the things that Rick Neuheisel's trying to do here is play defense first, hopefully stop Wyoming, and give his team a sense of confidence that we're okay. Back deep, number 26 is Mike Jenkins. He is a speedster, the JUCO transfer, and Marcus Brigham, number 34. Jenkins will head to the far side. Wyoming is ready for this game. Dana Dimble said, we're coming here to win this football game, and I think we will. Colorado players have that posted on their coaches' doors. Leslie's kick hits the upright. Starting out at quarterback is going to be the senior out of Tracy, California, Jeremy Silcox, 6'2", 213. They use a two-quarterback system, Artie. But he brings experience. He's a solid guy. He's not a guy that's going to play in the NFL someday. He's a good, solid college quarterback, Ron. But as Dana Dimmel told us yesterday, if they're going to win this football game, it'll probably be in the hands of Jay Stone or the redshirt freshman quarterback. Now, quickly, no huddle. They're going to get right at it. In court, Montgomery, our wide. Keep it on the ground, and Marcus Brigham. Brigham back-to-back 100-yard -back rushing games. Let's take a look at the offensive line for Wyoming. Jay Korth, he is going to be anchoring that center spot. He's a preseason All-American, was a guard last year, moved him over to center. He's played just about every position on this team. Wendell Montgomery is the wide receiver Colorado will have to keep an eye on. He's big, he's strong, and he leads the team in receptions. That is clearly the strength of this offensive football team from Wyoming. They're big, they're experienced, and they're good football players. Especially up front. Pick up a four on that last play. Sets up a second and six now for Wyoming. A lot of movement all over the place. No flags thrown. That was a non-rhythmic cadence that time in an attempt to draw Colorado offsides. And I thought it worked. It looked like there were two or three Colorado oh, yeah. defenders offsides. Here's the head coach of Wyoming, Dana Dibble, as we take a look at Colorado's defense. The tackles are strong. The coaches haven't been really pleased with their defensive end play. They'll need some big-time plays today. The linebackers, Mike Phillips, he's nursing a bad shoulder. He has to hold up this afternoon. And in the secondary, he's a good one. Marcus Washington already with a couple of interceptions in 1997. Third down and five. Ball's on the 25-yard line. We're in the first quarter. Silcox's pass is going to be batted away. Silcox almost had a chance to catch it himself. You know, and he had a lot of problems with that the last two or three weeks, getting balls batted. He's not very big. They've got him listed at 6'2", but I stood next to him the other day. He's only six foot. He has a hard time throwing over big defensive guys that are rushing with their hands up, which is exactly what happened there. I think Rashidi Barnes may have been the player who got his hand on it. That's Aaron Langley, the junior out of Longmont, Colorado. Tenth in the nation in punting. He is a good one, averaging almost 46 yards a kick. Herschel, Herschel Trotman is back for Colorado. Kicking into the wind. Sends Trotman back to the 20. He's going to let it bounce. He gets a great Wyoming bounce. And they're going to down it at about the 13, 14-yard line. A 62-yard kick for Aaron Longley. That is his longest of the year. You know, going into this game, one of the real strengths of Wyoming, on paper at least, is their kicking game. They not only have a great place kicker, they have an outstanding punter, as you saw. Well, John Hessler had a rough outing against Michigan, but as we mentioned, it was not all his fault. The numbers on him this year, and he's handled the criticism very, very well. And of course, a lot of people remember the incident of Rick Neuheisel caught by the cameras of yelling at John Hessler, and he told us yesterday, 
John Hessler and I are very, very close friends, and a lot of times he was yelling at the officials, not at John Hessler. Three with four, two tight ends, two wide receivers. Colorado's going to go right up the middle. Herschel Troutman on the carry. Southwest Airlines lineups continue. The offensive line, Brian Vidal, the JUCO transfer, they thought he might redshirt this year, but now he's subbing for an injured Aaron Wade at that left guard spot. And Phil Savoy, he is 6'3", and the guys covering him are about 5'9". One thing Colorado has worked on this year, or this week, the long pass. They think that they can get it to Savoy, and there he is right there. Pickup of nine on the play. Hessler keeps it on the ground. Up to the 25-yard line. Good enough for the first down as we take a look at the defense for Wyoming. And on the line, the anchor is Jeff Leonard. Second team all whack. He's big at 6'3", 280 pounds. The linebacking core, Jim Talich, leading tackler ever since he stepped foot on the Wyoming campus. And in the secondary, Brian Lee, three interceptions already this year, was second in the nation last year with eight picks. Colorado's already made a statement, Ron. Two runs out of two plays. They've got to establish a successful running game today. Three wide receivers to the left, lone setback. Hessler, three-step drop, slam pattern is dropped. Incomplete attended for Savoy. One of the things the coaches from Wyoming were fearful of were the fact that the slanting type patterns to guys like Savoy were going to hurt them. They worked very, very hard all week on that play. And I'll tell you, the Wyoming defender here comes up and does an excellent job of stripping the ball and knocking it away. Rob Duncan is having a fine year. That should have been a catch by the usually reliable Phil Savoy. Well, one thing that Savoy had problems with last year, he made the spectacular catches, but sometimes those catches, even Carl Durrell, the offensive the coordinator said go right through his hands second and ten Colorado keeps it on the ground at Troutman and he is upended as he crosses the 25 up to about the 27 yard line pickup of two on the play uh, now the running game is something that uh, has been questioned so much here in Colorado the two back set Colorado wanted to go to they haven't scrapped it They still want it to account for 20% of their play Well, it's going to today the two back set they're going to employ But what they need to do though Ron is establish the run out of the two tight end one back set Which is Troutman in the backfield But I think they've got a lot of little problems that need to be addressed and number one is they don't have a big fullback And number two, I think Troutman's just too small to be in every day down ball carrier. Hessler changing the play at the line of scrimmage, third and nine. Straight drop, has the protection, lofts it up, the long pass intended for Stiggers. He's tripped up, no penalty flag, incomplete pass. Hessler wants to complain about it. Jay Jackson on the coverage, and that's who Ohio State picked up. Excuse me, Ron, but Colorado has had a lot of problems this year with third and long. In fact, third and seven plus, they are three for 16 only. This makes it three for 17. They're having a hard time converting third and long. Hessler does a good job here throwing the ball up, but they just get tangled. That's a good call by the officials. They just got tangled, the receiver and the defender going for the football. Mike Jenkins standing at his own 35, and it's a terrible kick by Nick Peach. But he does get a great bounce. Fumble, ball is loose. Colorado has a shot at it, but it goes out of bounds, and Wyoming will have it. 11-16 left in the first quarter. We are scoreless with the Buffaloes and the Cowboys. The summer may be over, but the ice is heating up as the Colorado Avalanche season begins right here on UPN 20. The action is back. The intensity is back. The Avalanche are back. The Colorado Avalanche face off against the Dallas Stars live from Big Mac. It's season opener excitement. Wednesday night at 7, right here on UPN 20. Michael, you're going to be late for work. No. You know, we're just looking out for you. It's important to be prompt. All right. Hey, don't forget your hat. Oh, thanks, Dan. We love you. I love you, too. Thanks for waiting. You know Pizza Hut gives you 50% more toppings than Domino's. Now a medium's just $8.99, and a second's 5 bucks. Dad, I forgot my... My toy. Pizza Hut now accepts all major credit cards. So call today. 
Why is the competition so happy? Because Ford's factory authorized clearance ends on October 1st. So hurry down to your Ford dealer for financing as low as 1.9% for cash back up to $2,500. Taurus, Ranger, F-150, Explore, all your Ford favorites. Don't miss your last chance to get financing as low as 1.9% for cash back up to $2,500. This sale is so good, the competition is overjoyed. It's ending. So hurry to the factory authorized clearance at your Rocky Mountain Ford dealer. punter Nick Peach has to bend to field the snap. It's got to be up around his numbers more, but when he drops the football, the ball turns over and he shanks it off to the right. That's a horrible kick, but I'll tell you, Mike Jenkins makes a poor decision. You've got to come up and decide to field the ball or get away from it. He was very indecisive there, and that was almost a disaster mm. for Wyoming. That would have been great field position for the Buffaloes. Big time. And Wyoming's the one that have really forced the turnovers this year. 13 turnovers they've forced. Nine have turned into scores. Wyoming will take over on their own 20 yard line. First and 10. Artie Gigantino, Jim Knox, Ron Thulin coming your way from a beautiful day at Folsom Field in Boulder. Wyoming keeping it on the ground again with Marcus Brigham out of Aurora, Colorado. Brian Sutter on the tackle. Jay Court, the center. He started guard, he started the tackle, he started at center. Watch Korth here, he fold blocks back on Mau Mau. Does an excellent job of getting on him, gives him a little push with his hands, comes off and goes and looks for somebody else downfield. He's an All-American center. And he also has a 3.8 grade point average in mechanical engineering. Pick up a four on the play. Brigham again, fighting his way close to the 30. One of the things Dana Dimble has done at Wyoming, he has brought a Kansas State mentality to this football team, and that is play defense first, but secondly, run the football. And this guy is an ex-offensive lineman, and what he has done, he's almost got a lunch pail mentality, and he's brought that to this football team. They work hard, and they play hard. Third and one for Wyoming. Two wide receivers to the right. They're going to keep it on the ground, give it to Brigham again, and he crosses the 30. Let's see where the official's marking. It's going to be very close. One official is right on the 30, maybe a foot over. Brigham at 5'11", 202 pounds, averaging just under six yards a carry this year. You know, he's a better outside runner than he is an inside runner. I'm surprised they didn't put Jenkins in the backfield there and give it to him. Well, it was enough for the first down. Wyoming returned only three starters from last year's team, that record-setting team. None at the skill positions, but Dana Dimmel said, when I looked at the personnel, I still thought that we would be good offensively. And they are good offensively, and what he did, he changed almost every offensive lineman's position, put him in a new spot, and so far, so good for the Cowboys. Well, the balance that they showed this year has really been a concern for Colorado coaches. On first and ten, try on the right side. Brigham had a little bit of a hole, tripped up as he crossed the 35 up to the 38-yard line. We talk about all the changes on the line. They've even had to move guys to defense, but here's the changes that they've gone through. Right, they, they moved Bollinger from right tackle to left tackle, Hamilton from tackle to guard, Korth from guard to center, Smith, who was a defensive end two years ago, is playing the same position, but he's really a defensive guy, and Glauser went from guard to right tackle. So everybody in that group is doing something different. Well, the offensive line starting four seniors and a junior. Matolo and Brigham now in the backfield. Matolo moves over. And they give it to Brigham. And he bounces to the outside. He's got some running room up to the 46-yard line. Pickup of about 11 on the play. Another first down for the Cowboys. It's a little delay draw that time. And what Brigham does, he does a great job of starting off to one side and then bouncing it outside. He does a good job of getting his feet going, getting his shoulders down, and going up the field. That's an 11-yard gain. And you know, talking to Coach Dimmel, he didn't want to rush for 300 yards today. He said, we want to move the chains, get first downs, run or pass, but also control the clock. They're doing it so far as Patolo and Brigham again in the backfield. This time, Phil Cox with a play-action pass, floats it out of the flat to Patolo, and he is close to another first down. Patolo only his second reception of the year. Hannibal Navy's on the stop. 
Well, one thing that Dana Dibble wanted to do when he came to Wyoming in order to be successful is become more balanced, and that is something he has done so far. They like seeing the ball thrown around in the air in the WAC conference, but in Laramie itself in the state of Wyoming, they feel really good about what we're doing because when I came in, I told them, if we're going to win championships year in and year out, we're going to have to do it with good defense and running the football. And that is exactly what he's convinced his players to do. Spoken like an ex-offensive lineman, too. <laughs> yeah, who's going to mess with Dimmel? He a, was a big-time weightlifter at K-State. Brigham bounces to the outside, showing a little bit of speed before Ben Kelly, the redshirt freshman out of Cleveland, Ohio, chases him out of bounds. Another big pickup, and once again, Artie, they're controlling the line of scrimmage. Well, the offensive line for, from Wyoming does a great job of blocking here, but Brigham has excellent vision. See him stutter step there? He wants to see where he's going. Now he gives a little juke move to the inside and beats Kelly to the outside. He has got excellent vision, and like I talked about before, he is a little bit better of an outside runner and off tackle than inside the tackles. Oh, and I talked to Dana Dillon yesterday. So what was the big key for you? He goes, we got to make first downs and we got to put together long drives. He's doing it right here. Jenkins into the lineup right into the line of scrimmage and he has stood up handily. And you can see there is some jawing going on between these two teams. Colorado players weren't pleased with some of the comments that they've read about. Yeah, but you know, as I've always said, I think those things go out the window as soon as the ball is kicked off. I think Wyoming is coming in here, not cocky, but confident. And just being at their practice the other day, they practice very hard, but they got a big offensive line in which to run behind. It is the largest offensive line in Wyoming's history. They average 6'5", almost 300 pounds. Jenkins, low setback, and he moves over. Silcox, quick drop, penalty flags are thrown, motion all over the place, no play. That looked like an audible at the line of scrimmage based on what the Colorado defense was in. It looked like Colorado was playing man, and he threw a quick hitch to the outside. He might have taken too much time, Ron. Priority snap, false start, offense, repeat second down. It's referee Gerald Wright. The man we will be hearing throughout today. I thought it was interesting. Today's officiating crew is a whack crew. Well, it could be wacky, so that's <laughs> not too bad, I guess. How to push the ball back, setting up a second and 12. We're inside of seven minutes in quarter number one. Boy, if you were going to design a day to play football, is this it, Artie? Look at the day today. Just unbelievable weather. It doesn't get any oh, better no. than this. On second and 12. Silcox, Jenkins is stacked up. He's still able to pick up maybe a yard on the play, showing a little bit of power. Mau Mau on the tackle. Let's take a look at the keys to victory for this afternoon. First of all, for the Buffaloes. The first thing the Buffaloes have got to do is stop the run, which they're not doing right now. They've got to make their two tight end offense work, and they've got to play efficiently. And by that, no penalties and no big turnovers. They really want to get Wyoming into a passing game. Not doing it yet. Colorado defense, 108th in pass efficiency defense coming into this game. Silcox sees a bunch of black jerseys, great protection, throws it out on the flat, and it's complete to Durenencourt. Brahms Durenencourt, the junior out of Miami, Florida. Coaches say they need to get this young man the football. They want him to touch it four, five, and more times a game. Uh, he's kind of a possession receiver, you know. He's not a guy that's going to run down the field and beat you deep. He's a guy with great hands. And believe it or not, he comes all the way to the University of Wyoming from Miami. Corey Weedle, one of the most accurate kickers in the country. Aaron Langley is holding. Field goal's got the distance, and it's got the accuracy. So Weedle is now 5 of 7 on the air as he drills. The three for Dana Dimmel, and with 5.37 left to play in quarter number one, Wyoming gets on the board first. Boys at rest tend to stay at rest. Boys at motion tend to get thirsty. Now pay attention. Get thirsty, get Gatorade. Get Gatorade, get Gator points. Get Gator points, get Big 12 gear. When you get Big 12 gear, you tend to get noticed by members of the opposite sex. The kind that would otherwise spit in your direction. I've seen it. It happens. So, get Gatorade, get Gator points, get Big 12 gear. A commodity is something you trade. 
not something you drive. The unique Mazda 626. Sporty engineering. Incredible style. A silky automatic. And responsive power. Lease for $219 a month. The most class in its class. Mazda 626. Lease for $219 a month. Yeah, I know about performance. You need the right technology. You need the right equipment. You need reliability. You need the right gasoline. And you need the right skills. You need to trim the bushes. Sitco says go. Just outside of Boulder, looking down and right there, the University of Colorado. And Folsom Field will sell out crowd is here for the 83rd homecoming. And Weedle will kick it away, leading 3 0. His 39 yard field goal got the Cowboys on the board. Marlon Barnes and Ben Kelly set to receive it into the win, and it's not going to be returned by anyone. Our Mazda scoring drive, it was an impressive one. Dana Dimmel said, I don't like kicking field goals. I'm going to go for it on fourth down, not this time. No, he couldn't go for it there, but I'll tell you, on that scoring drive, of those 58 yards, 50 were by the run, and that's not what the Colorado defensive coaches had in mind, but it is what the Cowboy offensive coaches certainly had in mind. This is an important drive, one must think, for Colorado. They have been under 350 yards total offense, two straight games, only 224 against Michigan. If they don't put a drive together now, do you think maybe some questions are going to stop popping into the players' heads? Oh, I think so, absolutely. And they've just got to not panic, though, and just continue to try to establish the run today. Cheverini and Savoy. Cheverini goes out in the flat. They're going to go long to Savoy. The pass is going to be picked off by the center fielder, Brian Lee. Crosses the 30, cuts back. He's got some running room. Still on his feet as he gets close to the 20-yard line. Brian Lee's fourth interception of the year. He's already run one back for a touchdown. And that is Hessler's sixth pick of the year. Lee is the Willie Mays of Wyoming. He's a center fielder. Last year, he was second in the country in interception. And that is a perfect example of it right there. He plays zone while everybody else is playing man-to-man, -man, and he sees the football thrown as we see Savoy run down the field, and you're going to see Lee come out of nowhere, go up and catch the ball. He's really amazed to me right I'm now. I'm telling you, 33 yard on the return. He's one off Wyoming's career record of interception set by Paul Wallace. Bring him on the carry, try on the right side of that Buffalo defense. You know, going back to Lee for a second, some guys just have a knack of doing that. They see the football thrown, they're able to go and get it. That guy has got a knack of oh, yeah. seeing the football. And he's not going to cover guys man-to-man -man a lot of the times. He's just going to play center field. As Jay Stoner is now the quarterback for Wyoming, and you can see that for Brian Lee, 13 interceptions for this season. Jenkins and Patolo in the backfield behind Jay Stoner, the redshirt freshman out of Colorado Springs, Colorado. This kid has got a gun. Patolo straight up the middle. Only had four carries coming into this game. His longest run was six yards. You know, Stoner was a very highly recruited player two years ago, and he was recruited by the old staff of Coach Tiller. But talking to the coaches yesterday and Dana Dimmel, they compared this guy to Chad May from Kansas State. So that's a high compliment. And being in practice the other day, I was really impressed with his composure, but more impressed, Ron, with his arm. And he can throw the ball with velocity. He's more of a big play guy. Slipcox is more of a guy that kind of dissects the defense. We'll get a chance to see the arm. Great play selection by Wyoming. Blockers in front. Down to about the 12-yard line. Patolo. 
It was almost like Wyoming knew that the blitz was coming on that play. Yeah, it was a screen pass, and the way to slow down a pass rush is to throw a lot of screens because it puts the doubt in the rushers' minds. They really worked hard the other day and practiced on screens. He fakes it inside to Jenkins, lofts it over the top to Patalo, who was a great baseball player in high school, so he ought to be able to catch the ball, hold on to it, and get up the field. That was a good play call that time by the Wyoming offensive coaches. They're going to measure for the first down. They say Mike Patola has the best hands on the team. Well, like I said, he was a baseball yeah. player. He was a center fielder in high school. He's out of the College of San Mateo in California. He hit over 500 his senior year in high school. Well, Dana Dimmel going with the GQ look today. Wraparound sunglasses, little T-shirt. He is his own man. I tell you, I, I like this guy. We met him last year at Kansas State. And you, you got to like, he's a big teddy bear. He's a burly guy. He was a pretty good player in his own day when he was at Kansas State. Only 35 years old. Was at K-State for 10 years. First and 10 for the Cowboys. Balls on the 12. Knocking on the Buffalo door, and Stoner's going to audible. Keep it on the ground at Jenkins. Nothing doing. Oh, we already saw Colorado's keys to victories. We'll check in on Wyoming's, what they have to do today in order to be successful. What they've got to do is pressure Hessler, just like the University of Michigan did two weeks ago. Michigan sacked them three times, but pressured them 17 times. And the other thing, they're going to disguise their secondary coverages to put mental pressure on Hessler. So it's physical pressure, but also mental pressure by moving around in the secondary. Second and eight. Ball's on the 10-yard line. Two and a half to play here in the first quarter. Brigham cuts back, makes his way down to about the six-yard line. That is a nice tandem of Brigham and Jenkins. They both give you something different, just like the quarterbacks. Yeah, it's a one-two punch. And you know, you have to, like you have to have two quarterbacks today. You have to have two running backs because a guy just can't take that kind of punishment. And especially, like you said, Ron, they're two different kind of guys. Jenkins is a little smaller. He reminds me of Dante Hall from uh, Texas A&M, who we had a week ago. He's more of an inside guy, and Brigham likes to get the ball on the outside more. This Wyoming team spread Ohio State very well, and they're doing it to Colorado. Third and four, ball out of six. We have a penalty flag thrown. Jared Jarnigan, the sophomore out of Dallas, Texas, from the fullback spot. We'll wait and see what the call is. It was thrown right in the line of scrimmage, so you have to think it's probably holding. That'll back the Cowboys up. You know, that's just a killer right there for, oh, yeah. for Wyoming because you're in great field position. You've got Colorado on their heels a little bit, a little bit tired, and now you're going to lose good field position. That's the bad news. The good news is yeah. you've got a very accurate field goal kicker. So at the worst, you come out of here with at least three points. Well, the last two drives have been killed by penalties for Wyoming, and they want to stop the bleeding right now because they're knocking on the door and have a chance to put some more points on the board. Let's listen in. On the offense, repeat third down. In 19. 96 the University of Wyoming even though they had a different system on offense was an unbelievable 51 percent on third downs that is just an amazing statistic this year they're 33 percent 19 to 58 stoner facing a third and 13. two wide receivers top of your screen low setback is Brigham and he has the football he's got a hole up to the five yard line before Hannibal Navies has to bring him down. Now, Dana Dimble doesn't like going for field goals. On fourth down this year, he was seven of eight. We asked him what he's going to do. I have a philosophy, though, so it's kind of funny with a guy like Coy. I don't like to kick field goals, and we've gone for it on fourth down almost every time this year. And when we have to concede and go for field goals, I'm always really irritated, but it's always nice to know that you're going to have a guy like Coy that can make it. But we've gone for it. We went for it uh, last week, fourth and one at the 10-yard line. We were only ahead by six points, and most everybody else in the country would kick a field goal, and we went for it and didn't get it. So there's a little controversy behind that, but uh, we just don't like to concede the field goals. But when we do, we know Coy is going to be very uh, instrumental in finishing it off for us. 
We'll find out what Dana Dimble does when we come back. 3 0 Wyoming leads. A commodity is something you trade, not something you drive. The unique Mazda 626. Sporty engineering. Incredible style. A silky automatic. And responsive power. Lease for $219 a month. The most class in its class. Mazda 626. Lease for $219 a month. Turn it up, love to pump, slam dunk. In my own life, something that got to get the taste to get. New G, fly machine, football huddle, space shuttle, free to vote. You've done the math and figured out that you can consolidate bills and still afford to make some home improvements. But the lenders tell you that you don't have enough equity. Hi, I'm Dan Marino. If this has happened to you, call First Plus Financial at 1-800-510-PLUS. They'll lend you up to 125% of the value of your home, less your first mortgage balance. There's no application fees and you'll get an answer before you hang up. Don't listen to those other lenders. Call First Plus at 1-800-510-PLUS. Leading 3-0, 108 left in the first. Wyoming facing fourth down and three, and they're going to go for it. Well, their coach is a brash, aggressive guy, and that's what you make a statement to your fans and to your football team when you go for it on fourth down here. Seven of eight this year is a pretty good percentage. Marcus Brunson wide to the right. Jarnigan and Brigham are in the backfield behind Jay Stoner. First big play of the game right here. The left side of Wyoming's offensive line move. Julian Hooker, the tight end out of Homewood, Illinois, is the one who jumped the gun just a little bit, and that makes the decision for Dana Demel easy. Prior to the snap, full start, offense, still fourth down. Oh, that was a good call by the Wyoming coach. You're going to see it on the right side of your screen up here. Hooker just jumps a little bit. you got to be patient. And you know what the snap count is. You know what the play is in the huddle. You know you're not going to run a play. Yep. So why, Ron, do you move? you got to be more disciplined than that. Uh, Corey Weedle out of Burlington, Colorado, already with a 39-yarder. This one is going to be spotted at about the 17, marking a 27-yarder. Snap is good. The kick. Hooks right through the middle of the uprights. So Lito with two field goals has given, has given Wyoming the 6-0 lead here in the first quarter. You know, he's an amazing story. He walked on at the University of Wyoming. So much for recruiting services yeah. and, you know, spending tons of money flying players in. He just walked on, redshirted one year, and now he's a new Groza Award candidate for this year. He's an All-American kicker. He was an All-American Playboy kicker this summer. He is one of the great kickers right now in the country. Set it down to the sideline and Jim Knox. Jim, what do you have for us? Ron, after last week's San Jose State victory for Wyoming, afterwards, Dana Dimmel was asked, hey, were you guys actually looking past this game? He said, yes. I'll tell you guys, no ifs, ands, and buts. We were looking past San Jose State because we want Colorado. So far, looking past San Jose State is also paying off because right now Wyoming has the early lead, 6 to nothing. And I was in his office the other day, and we were kind of joking about that. He said, hey, I knew we were going to beat San Jose State. He threw 12 passes on the first 12 plays of the game because he wanted those passes to be ready for the Colorado defense. He started working in practice two weeks ago on Colorado, and they went out and just played San Jose State. He's got a 6-0 lead, and Weedle's kick again drives Ben Kelly deep into the end zone. Colorado. First and ten from their own 20. Now, we've already talked about how Brian Lee, the senior out of Colorado, has come up with four interceptions already this year as one run back for a touchdown. This was during Hawaii. Well, God, he makes it happen all the time. Last year, today, another example of the guy being a big-time center fielder. The thing that's amazing about him, he just concentrates on the football and just blanks everybody else out. Here's today going up, total concentration on the football, and he brings it down. 
That's what set up the field goal. Colorado on offense, first and ten. Cheverini and Savoy, the wide receivers. Troutman in the backfield. Looks like an audible at the line of scrimmage. Option. Hessler, no place to go. The Cowboys surround him. Led by Brian Brown, the linebacker that you really like out of Columbus, Montana. He was the most athletic guy on the defense the other day when at practice. He's a productive little guy. He's only 5'11", 215, but he makes plays. And in their scheme, the coaching staff does a great job of protecting him. And by that we mean offensive linemen just can't come right out and block him because they have a defensive lineman lined up on him. But he is Mr. Productivity for this Cowboy defense. The coaches are very surprised he has been this productive this year. He was hurt all spring. Hessler hands it off up to the 20-yard line as Troutman, and again, he swarmed over. One thing that Wyoming did, they controlled both of the lines of scrimmage, defense and offensively against Ohio State, and that is something Dana Dimmel is very, very proud of, and you can see their defense this season, what they've done. Well, 22 sacks is a big number. It's number one in the WAC, and it would be very high in the United States if the NC2A kept that stat. But the 14 turnovers and resulting in 62 points are a big deal, and that's aggressive, good football on defense. And that's also the end of the first quarter where Wyoming leads 6 nothing. The behind. Wouldn't you love to be free to go wherever your whims take you whenever you want for any reason at all? Drifting along with a tumbling tumbleweed. With Southwest, you can. You are now free to move about the country. Play it back, rock, rap, fast food, cool, dude. Home and wine, home run, Dr. Pepper, taste the fun. Movie star, classic car, talk show, Bobby and Ken, you'll twist again. Eastern replay. Now is the time. Now is the time. This is the place. Dr. What would you give to be more confident? What would you give for the knowledge it takes to move with certainty through every business day? For just $3.90 a week, the Wall Street Journal gives you the incisive writing, the big picture thinking you need to make better decisions, more confident decisions. Plus, with your paid subscription, you'll get our updated guide to understanding personal finance, 170 pages of great money managing and money saving ideas, plus our easy to use software. That's the guide and the software, a retail value of $18.95, yours free with a 10 week subscription to the journal. Get the confidence that comes from reading the world's most trusted source of business news and information. Call now, 800-603-2100. That's 800-603-2100 for the Wall Street Journal. Big 12 football is brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper, this is the taste. By Gatorade Thirst Quencher, you don't have to live life thirsty, life is a sport, drink it up. And by Southwest Airlines, with fares so low, you have the freedom to go places. That is beautiful Loveland Pass, home of Copper Mountain Ski Resort, among others, and they're going to be skiing up here in about three weeks, believe it or not. There's no ugly places up here in Colorado. <laughs> every, every shot you see is just absolutely beautiful. Exactly. Savoy, Cheverini, and Robert Toller, the wide receivers, three to the left. Tennyson McCarty is the tight end. Troutman in the backfield. Wyoming leads it 6-0. Artie Gigantino, Jim Knox, I'm Ron Thulin. Coming your way from beautiful Folsom Field. Now the Wyoming defense, they've done the job this game so far. Facing another test. Hessler's going to be rushed. He gets out of it, keeps his feet. Crosses the 20, up to the 25, to the 30. Robbie Duncan, the sophomore out of Colleen, Texas, 
is the one who finally brought him down. But Brian Brown really put the pressure on Hessler. Somehow, John got away from it. Brian Brown came completely clean on a blitz. It was a perfectly designed thing. But what you have to do, Ron, when you're that clean, you got to slow down a little bit because the quarterback, all he's got to do is make one move and you're going to run right past him. It's hard to teach a blitzing linebacker to do that, but you just got to bring yourself under a little bit more control. Well, they missed five quarterback sacks at Ohio State. They had a bunch, but he said, we missed five. We had guys in our sights that we just ran right by them. Troutman pulling his way over the 35 up to about the 37 yard line on first and 10 and just beginning quarter number two Stuart Hansen the defensive tackle out of Lisbon North Dakota on the stop now on this particular play you're going to see Trotman come up inside now what what Colorado is doing they're getting away from their two tight end offense by having three wide receivers out there they got to go back and have two tight ends in there so they can jam the ball up inside your wish is your command because here it is two wide receivers wide right on second and five that's what keeps it on the ground wide open Barnes on the carry. Brian Lee got stiff arm. Just about took his jersey off his pads. Barnes, the junior out of Memphis, Tennessee, has really improved. Now here's the two tight end offense. You got a tight end here and a tight end here. Now what this offense brings, it brings balance across the board. The favorite play is the counter play, which they ran just there. It makes the defense defend both tight end sides. John Hessler is very comfortable with this particular formation. That's why they wanted to go back to it. They're keeping it on the ground. This time another gaping hole and some big yardage picked up once again. This time it's Troutman. But that time the offensive line of Colorado dominated. Well, what is happening is that they are starting to get going up front. I think there's some shock in what was happening to them in the first quarter. But when you spread out the defense in that doubles two tight end formation, it's very hard defensively to secure every gap. And that's exactly what happened that time. And Wyoming's going to call a timeout. Vic Koenig, their defensive coordinator, does not like what he sees. Timeout with 13:21 left in the second. New Hazel and Company trail. Mission is a no-go. I still have a man out there. Abandoned by his country. The code of military justice is clear. Now he will lead a team of elite warriors on a mission. The chopper went down on the Turkey-Iraq border. No government would dare. We go in and get him. From Jerry Bruckheimer, producer of The Rock and Con Air, comes the last word in action. There's nothing free about freedom. Soldier of Fortune, Inc. Premiering Sunday at 8 on UPN 20. Big pickups. Big event. Act now before the GMC model year-end sales event is over. Full-size Sierras are included, even extended cabs. GMC Red Letter Days means now is the time to act with 5.9 financing for up to 60 months on select Sierras, plus option package savings up to $1,250. Plus, just announced, big factory to dealer incentives mean you can make your best deal now during Red Letter Days at your Colorado GMC dealer. Westbound Route 3 is backed up under the overpass due to an accident on Erie Boulevard. The tractor trailer is involved in this. Plenty of sunshine through today with seasonal temperatures. We should return. Here, when you want to have your business and your life under one roof, we can set that up for you. Call one of our U.S. West small business consultants. They'll invest imagination and experience into your home office. Life's better here. U.S. West. Trails in the second. Much has been written of the Neuheisel Hessler relationship. And Rick Neuheisel says his relationship with John Hessler is a very, very close one. We've got a great relationship. Uh, I think he'd say the same thing. Uh, but given what the television cameras picked up during the Michigan game, it, it looked as if I was being very hard on him. And I apologize for that. I, I uh, in no way meant to uh, uh, discombobulate him to the point where he was unable to go out and perform at his best. All I was trying to do was be the quarterback coach and, and uh, get him corrected and so on and so forth. But I probably got a little too adamant and uh, uh, you know, probably needed to disassociate myself from being quarterback coach and head coach. Uh, because the head coach is on camera a lot. <laughs> and, uh, 
So I apologize for that, and, and John knows that uh, it won't happen again, and, and I'm looking forward to watching him play. And you know, he says that with a great deal of sincerity. He was very, Rick Neuhausel was very upset of the way he was depicted in that Michigan game. But these two guys, when he comes over his house, watches television, and I think a little bit too much may have been made of it. Well, and, and you know, like you said, John was trying to do too much on his own. In fact, he's so embarrassed, he's fining himself now $2 every time he swears. And I guess he's got about 20 bucks already in the pot. So he's trying <laughs> to prevent that. Second and six. I'm not touching that one. Second and six. Balls out the 31. Hessler straight drop. Blitz is coming. He's going to swing it out. Left side to Trotman. Got a blocker. Some running room. First down and about 10 to spare. Jeff Leonard had to come from that defensive tackle spot to finally bring down Troutman, who has the best hands on the Colorado team. That time it worked for Colorado because Wyoming was coming on the blitz, and the best play that you can have called against the blitz is a screen pass. The offensive lineman just push the defenders and then get out in front of little Herschel Troutman. And Colorado should be a good screen team, Ron, because their offensive linemen are very athletic, and that's what you need to run an efficient screen game pretty good looking drive for the Buffaloes so far some pretty good stats on Trout with bounces out to the right side he is going to be corralled falls forward up to about the eight yard line pick up a six you know we're inside the 20 now and on the Colorado offensive staff Rick Neuheisel makes the call in quote the red zone which is inside the 20 and on third downs Carl Durrell the offensive quarter coordinator makes the rest of the calls and I think that's real interesting but the head football coach makes the calls in the red zone and on third down and I tell you Colorado is very very good this year inside the red zone two touchdowns and two field goals that's a hundred percent tenth play of the drive Trotman six carries 44 yards so far Marlon Barnes right side touchdown Colorado Marlon Barnes first rushing touchdown of the year and I think what Rick Neuhausel is going to look at when he looks at that drive. They did most of it on the ground. Well, yeah, that's the first thing. But the second thing, Marlon ba Barnes is a lot bigger. You know, he's 215 pounds. And that's what I was talking about there, of getting a bigger back into the game because he can break tackles. Troutman's a guy that can catch screen passes and get outside. This guy's a better inside runner. And if you can keep getting him the ball, maybe this Colorado running game will pick up. Jeremy Aldridge to tack on the extra point, and he does. He's 5-5 five five on PATs. 11-25 in the second, and Colorado has taken the lead, 7-6. We'll return to Folsom Field after this word from Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. These days, it seems like everything is the official something of somebody. What's next? The official soft drink? The team mascot? Look at this guy right here. And this one here. And his girlfriend and his kid. See? See, they're drinking Dr. Pepper just because it tastes great. It's kind of the official soft drink of everyone else. Like this guy with the bratwurst. He executes a one-handed switch. You can't coach this stuff. It's a thing of beauty. Hey, who's doing that? I do that. What's going on? Some people enjoy a good challenge. But earning a frequent flyer ticket shouldn't be one of them. At Southwest Airlines, we count quick trips, not long miles. Just eight round trips is all it takes, and you'll be flying free before you know it. Rapid rewards from Southwest Airlines, the quickest, easiest way to earn free travel. You are now free to move about the country. Hey, going to the big game? No, I'm not into college football. What? What? Not into college football? Well, let me tell you something. College football is Saturday afternoon. It's crisp fall days. It's the sun reaching its zenith, warming your body paint till it crackles. It's 79,000 hearts beating as one. Would you please take it down a notch? so I can talk to the lad. Thank you. I want to get you to that game. I want to talk to you about football. Colorado had the ball only three and a half minutes in the opening quarter, but they make good in quarter number two as they've taken the lead 7-6 thanks to Marlon Barnes on the touchdown run. 
They only had 13 yards rushing in that opening quarter, Colorado. Much better for the game so far, Artie. Well, that's what they've got to do because when they go up and play in Lincoln this year against those Cornhuskers, they've got to be able to run the ball. And later on in November, when the weather's cold and you can't throw the ball all the time, they have got to come out of this game today. And I'm not going to mince any words about it. They've got to come out of this game feeling good about their running game. Jason Leslie, the kamikaze, set to kick it off. Barefoot kicker. Kick it off to Brigham and Jenkins. Short kick. Wyoming at about the 12. Brigham gets nailed at the 20. Let's take a look at Marlon Barnes once again in the touchdown run. The guy who springs it, though, is big Melvin Thomas, the right guard. He pulls around and gets himself a great block. Barnes sees the hole, dips his shoulder, and just turns on and reaccelerates up into the end zone. That was a good run. He wasn't touched, but credit the offensive line. A nice block. Our Mazda scoring drive for Colorado, 80 yards and 10 plays. Barnes finally going the final eight yards. They had 61 yards rushing on that drive. Colorado has rushed for 76 yards so far. Jay Stoner remains in at quarterback for Wyoming. They had the ball 11 minutes and 29 seconds in quarter number one. Jenkins, he is stacked up big time, not before he picks up two yards on the play. Murkison in on the pile. Well, Mike Jenkins, he's a guy that kind of recruited himself to go to Wyoming. And when we met him yesterday, I was surprised how solid and big this guy is. Not necessarily height-wise, but just muscle-wise. Well, he's 5'7", he's 205. He looks more like about 210 pounds. He's a guy from Monta Vista High School out in California who said, I saw Wyoming play on television. I like their style. So he called the coaches and recruited himself to the University of Wyoming. Silcox floats it out in the, in the flat to Jenkins, breaks one tackle, crosses the 30 up to the 33-yard line. I like Dana Dibble's comment, too. He goes, he said that Mike Jenkins wasn't little, just short. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he's absolutely right about that. But Jenkins can catch the ball because in high school, he was a slot back in the run and shoot. And he became a running back for the last two plays of the games of the year when the quarterback got hurt. He went to Coffeyville Junior College and was a tailback there. But this guy does it all. Returns kicks, runs the football, but also catches passes. The man they call Pork Chop or Piglet. He doesn't like those nicknames. Jenkins, he's got it. Nothing doing. Taking a couple of pretty good licks from the big defensive line of Colorado. Brady McDonald, number 82. The redshirt freshman out of Quinn, South Dakota. Ryan Sutter coming up from the free safety spot to help out. You know, no matter what size you are, he's not going to go anywhere no. on that one. That was a good play that time by McDonald, who didn't start the game. He's a substitute that's doing a good job because Colorado likes to rotate their defensive linemen, so they're fresh in the fourth quarter. And when you're a blitzing team and you do a lot of pass rush things, that really takes the energy out of your defensive linemen quickly. Loss of one on the play. Brings up a second down and 11 from the shotgun. Silcox right over the middle. Pass is complete. Excellent catch. Wendell Montgomery, two 100-yard receiving games already this year. He is their big gun as far as catching the football. Had 21 catches coming into this game. Now, the look you're going to see on your screen here is right through the eyes of the free safety. He is looking at the quarterback. He sees the ball thrown, and he comes up, Ryan Sutter, to make the tackle. That is what a free safety or a strong safety sees when a quarterback is back in a shotgun and throwing a pass. That's great camera work by our crew. Was it enough? Mm, baby, that's eyelash. Stoner's three for three throwing the ball. Now, you know what they've done in this situation? They've lined up with four wide receivers to spread the defense out and then run a quarterback sneak. They've done that five times so far this year. Let's see if they do it again. Well, they're going to put it on the hash mark. Stoner has picked up the play from the sideline. He trots back in. I like this guy. He's a great guy. You know, he reminded me of Bill Parcells the other day, and if he's successful, I'm going to start calling him Little Tuna. I like you know, that. that because he acts like Parcells. He goes for it on fourth down. He's run a couple fake punts this year, and he's a tough guy, and he doesn't have one political bone in that big body of his. Wait. He 
You combine New Heisel and Dana Dimmel's age, and you have Joe Paterno's age. And I guarantee you it's a quarterback sneak here. Here's four wide receivers. Um, they're three of five on third down conversions. There it is. We'll try the right side. Stoner will get the first down. You got to get back into coaching. Why? Well, it's just <laughs> obvious. And, and the reason you do that is because the defenders have got to go out and cover those guys. Otherwise, you'd line up and just throw it to them. But credit those offensive linemen up front. Look at the surge that these guys put on. They come forward, and what Stoner does, he hesitates a little bit and just falls into the open hole. Well, people forget that Wyoming was a running team prior to Dennis Erickson taking over as head coach a few years back. He's the one who got the passing going. Brigham right side chased out of bounds pick up a maybe three on the play but you got to think of the guys that coach here Bob Devaney Freddie Akers a lot of these guys were running coaches Dennis Erickson comes in and that's when he started kind of throwing everything all over the place right. and they weren't just running coaches Pat Dye Fred Akers Bill Lewis and Al Kincaid all were option running yeah. coaches it's amazing the coaches that have been through the University of Wyoming this guy is the best defensive coordinator right now in the National Football League and obviously Joe Tiller's the University of Purdue. So this has been a cradle of head coaches. Rick Sherman now with the Green Bay Packers. Joe Tiller is the man that left and Dana Dimmel took his place. On second and six. Right up the middle it is Brigham again and he has enough for another first down. I am very impressed with the offensive line of Wyoming. They are doing the job. They're doing the job, but if you notice, Wyoming is coming back to the huddle very slow. They're being very methodical about it because they are trying to take as much time as possible off the clock, but they're also trying to move the change. And I'm telling you, Ron, I was very, very impressed, over-impressed with this offensive line the other day in practice. The big, tough guys. Brigham, 12 carries, 75 yards already this afternoon. We're not even out of the second quarter. Stoner pitches back to Brigham. Shaken and Bacon crosses the 40 down to the 39-yard line. You know, we were asking, a lot of people say you come up and play in, in Boulder, Colorado. Oh, you got to worry about the altitude. Dana Dimmel says, wait a minute. In Laramie, we're at 7,300 feet. We're coming down to the flatlands for this game. I don't think you worry about those things because you give your players too many things to worry about and then too many excuses after the game. Hey, go play the game. Who cares? Whether it's snow or altitude or in the ocean, just go play games. 5,300 feet, and Artie and I feel it every time we walk from the hotel up to the stadium. I think we sweat more than the players do. That's because we're not very good shape, though. <laughs> well, that's an understatement. On second and eight, 740 to play in quarter number two. Patolo is going to be stacked up right at the line of scrimmage, maybe falls forward to pick up a half a yard. Terrell Cade is the one who had the first hit on the play. Let's take a look at some scores from around the country. Texas A&M impressive last week. North Texas pulled the upset, beat Texas Tech. Now Texas A&M leading. Florida all over Tim Couch. A lot of pub in that game. Boy, Bob Davies got his hands full again, 7-7. You know, th today, they were already talking about how many years they're going to oh, give yeah. Bob Davies. He's only been there for three games. They're talking about firing him now after three years. Give the guy a chance, and he'll do a fine job. Third down and seven. Ball on the 41. Stoner, little play action. Pressure is on. He's got a scramble. He'll be tripped up. Dives forward. They're going to mark it at the 35-yard line. Nick Ziegler, the man, the man who has old English lettering tattooed on his back, and it says Ziegler. Puts his own name on his back in a tattoo. Why would you do that? I have no idea. <laughs> it's going to force a fourth down situation. Good job. Wheel back in. Excuse me, Ron. Good, good job that time by Andy Krisoff, who I think is really an outstanding defensive coordinator. He teaches blitzing aggressive defense. In fact, the kids call him. Coach Blitz. Weedle, 52-yarder. He has enough leg for it. He kicks a high ball, the coaches say. He kicks that one right through the uprights. Weedle's third field goal of the afternoon. This one from 52. Dana Dimmel says he doesn't get any kicks blocked because he kicks it so high. He also kicks it far. 6-13 left in the second. Wyoming has regained the lead, 9-7. The summer may be over, but the ice is heating up as the Colorado Avalanche season begins right here on UPN 20. The action is back. The intensity is back. The Avalanche are back. The Colorado Avalanche face off against the Dallas Stars live from Big Mac. It's season opener excitement.
Wednesday night at 7, right here on UPN 20. The time is near. An elite task force is ready. And their mission is about to test the limits of television. From Kevin Bruckheimer, the producer of Con Air, Soldier of Fortune 8. Premiering Sunday, September 28th on UPN 20. So that you can go to these extremes, we've gone to some of our own. Introducing the ultimate Grand Cherokee event, featuring the best incentives of the year on 1997 Jeep Grand Cherokees, like low 4.8% financing or this remarkable $339 a month lease. But hurry, these incredible incentives end when the 97 Grand Cherokees are gone. So now, more than ever, Grand Cherokee can take you to extremes. Check out this $339 lease at your dealer. Our Dr. Pepper Big 12 Game of the Week will be in Stillwater as the undefeated Oklahoma State Cowboys take on the Texas Longhorns in a South Division showdown. All-American tight end Alonzo Mays leads a potent Cowboys attack, while Longhorn tailback Ricky Williams hopes to run wild at Lewis Field. Join us at 11.30 Central next Saturday morning for the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Game of the Week. And this afternoon, Longhorns had their hands full. They trailed just about the entire game, but they pull it out. 38-31 is the final, and we will see them next week. That must have been a long two weeks oh. in Austin after what happened against UCLA. The net buys are bad enough, oh. but when you get beat that bad, like Colorado did against the University of Michigan, it is absolutely no fun because that bad taste yep. of defeat just lingers around you until you have to go play another game. And although we're members of the media, the media has to write something. So a lot of the stuff, they keep rehashing it. The players have to read it. Rick Neuheisel had to go through it with Michigan. And he was very proud of his players, though, the way they handle all the negative publicity that they got from that Michigan defeat. But as you know, he told us yesterday, we haven't lost a Big 12 game yet. We're still in this thing. He's absolutely right. So you get the, the problems with Michigan over with. You go back to having fun. And you don't let the loss last week beat you this week. The wind forces Weedle to have somebody hold the ball, and he's going to boot it right to Ben Kelly, who trots out of the end zone in Colorado. Will begin first and 10, their own 20. Weedle has some kind of a leg. Let's take a look at that field goal. Watch how long this thing goes. <laughs> it's a good snap and a good hold, and that probably would have made, oh, what do you think, at least another 20 yards? That's oh. one heck of a kick, and he's a happy guy, and he ought to be a happy guy because that's one heck of a leg he's got. Oh, when we were watching him warm up prior to the game, he was out there just taking one step, booting 50 yarders. We were sitting up here, just Sam Polis, our spotter, and I were sitting there going, my goodness, this guy can His go. leg swing is so fast. 8.07 to play in the second. Colorado, last drive was impressive. Ended up with Marlon Barnes taking it in from about eight. Two wide receivers to the left. Hessler's going to put it up top. Looking for somebody. Finally gets it to Savoy. Nice catch. He you know, makes the difficult you No, know, Ron, I don't understand this. They're running the ball well, and then they come out. They're not showing any patience, and they got to start throwing the ball again. You know, Savoy was lucky to catch that. Run the ball and keep Wyoming back on its heels because Wyoming wants Hessler to throw the ball. And it's great concentration that time by Savoy, which is one of the reasons he is going to be a high NFL draft show someday. Well, they've had problems on first down this year. But, you know, I agree with you. Put it on the ground. They're doing it again this time. Up to maybe the 33-yard line, Herschel Troutman, the senior out of Naples, Florida, very steady. Still looking for that 1,000 yards rushing the football. You know, people talk about why the Colorado can't run the ball effectively. One of the things I think, and no one has come up with this theory but me, is they substitute too much. And I don't think a good running team can get into a rhythm with so many substitutes. When I was at USC, we lined up in one formation, kept the same guys in there, and just knocked everybody over and ran the ball all the time. When you substitute, you don't establish a rhythm in the running game. You had Anthony Munoz and those guys that one year. Yeah. Your offensive line was big. 
Kessler on second and seven. He's going to be flushed out of the pocket. No penalty flag throw. Looked like there may have been a hold, and Hessler is going to be dropped at the 35. Able to pick up two on the play. Boy, Dwayne Cherrington looked like he may have grabbed a face mask of somebody trying to block, and I think it was Brian Brown. It certainly looked like it, and Brown is coming clean on that inside blitz, but got to credit Hessler. He's doing an excellent job of escaping from sacks. We're going to see Brown come up the middle again. There's some confusion in the Colorado offensive line, but the back has got to come across and pick him up. Well, they did call a penalty. I didn't see the flag thrown, but it was thrown on the far side of the field, and here's Rick's reaction. He doesn't like penalties, and last uh -oh. year they set a school record with 97 penalties. So far this year, coming into the game, they only had 15. Holding on the offense, repeat second down. Well, for those of you who just joined us, let's take a look at our Southwest Airlines game summary. Weedle, three for three on field goals, his longest being 52. Wyoming and Colorado are running the football pretty effectively so far. And the passing yards, it's not what everybody thought it would be an aerial show. John Hessler, however, has already got one pick. Brian Lee snagged it from him. He's only two for five throwing the football. And obviously this game is playing into the hands of Wyoming right now. Wyoming couldn't have written a better script so far. John Hessler feels comfortable in the shotgun. They want to give him some more time, and that's what he's doing now. Hessler passes complete to Cheverini. But you know, Hessler ran the shotgun in high school. That's why he likes it. He's very comfortable back there. But what it also does, Ron, it allows him to see his receivers and the defense a lot quicker. And when you're getting harassed, like he is a little bit today and like he did against Michigan, you want as much time to decipher what's going on as possible. And the shotgun gives that to you. As long as you have a snapper that can get the ball back there. Right. The negative is you can't run the ball effectively from the shotgun. Well, we haven't called Chris Anderson's name a whole lot, but he is going to go wide to the left side. He is the big man on third down situations the last two years. He's only had one catch that wasn't a first down out of completion. But they're going to keep it on the ground on third and 20 and no place to go. We have penalty flags thrown. And the Boo Birds are out. Before the snap, we had delay. Offense, still third down. You see, that's what I'm talking about. When you have so much substitution, sometimes the quarterback doesn't know who's in the game, and sometimes the coaches call play that doesn't mi mix with the people in the game. So that's why you get a lot of delay of game type penalties with teams that substitute so much. And I think it's all good stuff, but I believe you've got to limit it, and I think Colorado's got to limit what they do in the substitution package. Colorado only one of three on third downs. They go three wide receivers to the left. Wyoming putting a lot of guys in the box. Hessler has some time. He's going to go deep. Nobody there but guys in white. I'm not sure if Anderson or Savoy, who it was intended for, ever, both guys kind of looked at each other like it was you. J.P. Williams almost picked it off. J.P. Williams should have caught that. He was a wide receiver last year, and he comes in in the nickel package. But it looked like the wide receiver down on the bottom of your screen turned the wrong way. It was a good throw by Hessler, but it looks like he turned the wrong way and stopped. He didn't think the ball was going that deep. You got to keep running because that was almost another interception. Mike Jenkins, the lone man to receive the punt. Ten men on the line of scrimmage for Wyoming, but they back off into the wind another bad kick and this won't even get up to the 50. Boy that is not what you want when you're deep in your own territory you got up to the 38 yard line. Colorado continues to have problems with the kicking game. They used to lead the nation in the early 90s and late 80s in punting every year. This year and last year they've had nothing but problems and I think one of this guy's problems is how he drops the football. It looks like it's coming down too much in front of his foot. Now Mitchell he, he's, he's pretty good. I mean he and Peach alternate but he's got to get the ball more on the crest of his foot, not on his toes. Well, Peach kicked first. It went 43, but he actually kicked it about 23. Just got a good bounce at it. Then Mitchell's kick there was about 22. And Wyoming takes over with 3.06 left in the second, leading 9-7. And they're going to keep it on the ground. 
Good job by the defensive left side of Colorado containing that. Nick Ziegler pulling him down. Let's take a look at our Dr. Pepper Conference leaders. Our category is interceptions. This is in the Big 12, and Marcus Washington from Colorado has got two. He is a great-looking corner. He's a big guy. He's 6'3", 210, with long arms, and that guy is going to play on Sunday someday. And Patrick Brown, our resident thespian, with two for touchdowns. Jenkins in the backfield from the shotgun. Silcox out of the flat. Pass is complete up to the original line of scrimmage. Wendell Montgomery is thrown down hard to the turf. Now, does, I like does, him. does Washington have uh, our telecast going into his helmet? I just said something nice about him, and he makes a great play here. But you can see how physical he is, and that's the rage right now in football because the wide receivers are so big. You need big corners in which to combat the big wide receivers. Boy, that's a takedown if I've ever seen one. Uh, he's 6'3", 210. The Colorado really thinks that their quarters are doing such a good job. They can play a little more crazy defense and just come at people a lot. And here they come on the blitz. Silcox looks for the screen. The pass is complete, but won't even get to the original line of scrimmage. How did he catch that? And Washington, Washington read it perfectly. Now, he shouldn't have thrown that pass. you got to throw that one away. But that's the inexperience there of Jay Stoner. But credit Marcus Washington for seeing it and coming up and make the big play. The quarterback is taught when you're running a screen play, if you see the opposite color jersey where you're going to throw the screen, throw it away. But I don't understand how he drilled the ball in there. That was one heck of a throw and catch. But he's got to be smarter than that and experience with experience he will make the proper decision there well Villamy Mau Mau was really coming out strong right up the middle and contested Brunson made the catch here's the file on Dana Dimble youngest head coach in division 1a his entire career at K-State well, he's done a great job there, and obviously he was part of the rebuilding process at Kansas State. And that's the reason he got the job at Wyoming. They wanted to take somebody out of a program like Kansas State that was going to come to the University of Wyoming, stay for six or seven years, and win three or four WAC championships. And he has got the talent in this program, and I think the coaching staff and the leadership to do just that. Well, every year as coordinator at Kansas State, the team had a 1,000-yard rusher and an all-conference quarterback. Langley set to kick it away. Troutman standing on his own 10-yard line. They worked on a fake punt the other day in practice in this situation. They didn't run it here, though. Oh, he gets this one up high above Folsom Field. Takes a bounce. Let's see where they mark it. Nope, touchback. Oh, that was almost a spectacular kick by Aaron Langley. How high do you think that was? I, I, it looked went above the stadium. I know. He really booted it. So Colorado dodges a bullet after their bad punt. They're able to have a good defensive effort. That was probably two feet away from maybe being down at about the one foot line. Let's take a look. It's called a sky kick where you want the ball to bounce somewhere in here so your guy can keep the ball on this side of the goal line. But unfortunately, the ball hits in the end zone. It was an excellent kick. Mm. It was excellent execution. And the cover guy was down there, but it just was a little bit too far. Now let's see what Colorado can do. Still have 125 remaining here in the first half. They really wanted to be patient in their play calling as far as the offensive side of the football for Colorado. Has a lot of time. Has to scramble. Nice coverage by Wyoming. Able to complete the pass up to Phil Savoy. Good patience by John Hessler. Yeah, and what happens on a blitz like that, you get after him, Hessler escapes, and the defensive backs just cannot stay with the receivers for that long. And the two-minute offense for Colorado with 1.15 to play. And you can see what they have done, 73%. That's an impressive number. Big Hessler's time. got a man wide open, and the pass is complete to Savoy. Down to the 30, to the 20. Savoy with a little juke step right off the line of scrimmage. He had nothing but goalposts in front of him. Watch what Savoy does on this move. 
You know, we're talking about big physical defensive backs, but watch how he just throws the defender out of his way. That was Jenna Jackson, who's only 5'8", and that's exactly what I was talking about when we were talking about Washington. You need big physical corners to cover big physical wide receivers because that's a perfect example of why. Now that's his longest reception of the year for Savoy. It goes for 45 yards. Hessler upstairs again. Lost it in the end zone for Anderson. Incomplete. Robbie Duncan and Brian Lee were on the coverage. Hessler threw it up, hoping that Anderson could use his size to come down with that. Anderson 6'4", 215. And Brian Lee almost came down with the ball again. That was good coverage that time as we see it through the eyes of Brian Lee. The ball is up in the air. He times it, but they collide a little bit. He's got to go up there with his hands a little bit more, Ron, and go after the football like he did on those other interceptions. He was kind of waiting that time for the ball to come to him. Nice job also by Robbie Duncan. Now they're in field goal range for Jason Leslie, but I'm sure Rick New has a 1-6 on the option. The pitch back to Troutman bounces out to the right side before being knocked out at about the 15-yard line with 42 seconds left to play well, in the, the first half. The good news on that, though, Ron, it gets out of bounds and it stops the clock, and everybody's booing here at the play selection. But what happened that time, John Hessler changed the play at the line of scrimmage based on the defense, and the audible was to run an option, right. which you like to do against man-to-man -man coverage. They don't have an option in that offense at the University of Colorado. It's always an audible. Third down and five. Anderson and Chevrolet to the left. They lob it up into the end zone, looking up into the sun. Did he catch it? No. Savoy, the intended receiver, they wanted to use his height again. This time it just floated on him. And that sets up a fourth down and five on the 15 and going to bring in Jason Leslie. That's not a good pass. That's a fade pattern. He's got to get the ball somewhere up in here, not over there. The ball was thrown out of bounds. The intention was right because Savoy is six foot three. Duncan is five foot eight, five foot eight and a half. So you have a physical mismatch. It's the right call, but it was a poor pass that time by John Hessler. Well, Leslie kicks the long field goals. They're going to let Aldridge kick this. He's one for one this year. This is a 32-yarder. And it splits the uprights. So Jeremy Aldridge perfect on the year. Two for two. And Colorado has regained the lead with 33 seconds left. You always want to go in halftime with some type of momentum, and I think that might have given Colorado just a touch of momentum. Well, yeah, but there's 33 seconds left, and, you know, Colorado plays so much man-to-man -man and blitzes so much, they are susceptible to giving up a big play. Wyoming, I think, is going to come out and try to go downtown and try to get three more points, or obviously seven more points, before they go in at the halftime. But I tell you, this is one heck of a football game again, between two very good football teams. Well, let's take a look at the play that set up that field goal by Jason Leslie. It was the pass. Hessler to Phil Savoy. Good for 45 yards. That was a perfect pass. Great touch on the throw and a good run after the catch by Savoy. Let's take a look at it one more time. Oh, I love this. This is good physical football from a wide receiver, which you usually <laughs> don't see. You like to see a wide receiver get physical and throw somebody around. But again, not to repeat myself, though, Ron, this guy is going to play in the National Football League because he's what every scout is looking for. He's got size. He's got great hands. And speaking of scouts, there was only 10 of them here at practice That's the other it. day at the University of Colorado. It so was a who's who, wasn't it? It was a who's who. Still 33 seconds left in the first half. It's been just what we thought it would be. <laughs> Leslie, it's going to be a short kick. And they're not going to get much, probably up to about the 27-yard line. Now we're going to update the two-minute offense for the Buffs. 
How about 71 of 97 since 1988? 51 touchdowns and now 20 field goals. One of the reasons they're so successful is they work at it. They end every Thursday practice with a 20-minute period in the two-minute offense and defense. And their defense ought to be good at it because their offense is so good at it and they work against each other. But that man and the coaching staff prior to his arrival have done a great job with this two-minute drill. The Bill McCartney slogan, you achieve what you emphasize. Final 26 ticks. Stoner is going to scramble. Going to converge on a bunch of black jerseys. And boy, I tell you, what a hit by Ryan Black coming up from that strong safety spot. Here's a guy that was kind of in the doghouse at Michigan. You know, he was in the doghouse, but going back to Stoner for one second, Ron, he should have thrown the ball out of bounds there. Because if you want to march down the field and maybe kick a field goal, you want to throw the ball out of bounds and save the clock. But obviously, his inexperience showed there. Yeah, Wyoming's just going to let the clock tick down to a couple of zeros, and that's the way the first half will end. Hessler's got a pick, but he also had some pretty good passes, and that has allowed the Buffaloes to come back and take a lead as we head to intermission 10-9, and Wyoming has played just about the game they wanted to play. Dana Dimmel wanted to keep it close the first half. And they came in and said, we're going to be physical, we're going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with these guys, we're not going to back down. And when we talked to Dimmel, he said, I'm recruiting players to beat Colorado. I don't want to win the whack just I want to recruit players in my program to beat Colorado. Now let's send it down to Jim Knox. Jim? All right, thanks, Ron. Coach, you started a little slow, only 13 yards rushing in the first quarter, picked it up a little bit in the second quarter, now going to halftime leading by a point. Your thoughts? Well, we're in a dogfight. Wyoming's a good team. They're controlling the ball on the ground more than we thought they'd be able to, so we're going to have to pick it up with our defensive intensity, and then we just got to get more consistent on offense. And most of all, we can't turn it over. Real quick, what are you going to tell the team at half here? <laughs> we're in a dogfight. Let's come out and fight like we uh, belong in this kind of thing, and let's come out and play like Colorado is supposed to play. Best of luck, Coach, in the second half. Ron? All right, thank you, Jim Knox. Halftime at Folsom Field, where Colorado leads Wyoming 10-9. Halftime activity straight ahead. Frequent flights and convenient schedules, Southwest Airlines gives you the freedom to do business out of town during the day. And still, come home at night. Winston, I'm home! You are now free to move about the country. Turn it up, love to pump, slam dunk. In my home, I'm up and down. Got to get the taste to get. Blue jean, fly machine, football hat this simple looking device is the key to unlock your body's hidden potential it can change the look and shape of every line and curve on your body because it's the weight, the challenge, and the secret behind one of the most effective fitness machines in the world. Introducing the Bowflex Power Pro. Bowflex uses patented power rod resistance to give you an incredibly smooth, natural feel for over 60 different health club quality exercises. With features like a built-in aerobic rowing exercise, convertible grips, and convenient folding capabilities, it's easy to see why a Bowflex was selected by Fitness Magazine as the best home gym for 1997 and was awarded a Consumer's Digest Best Buy. It's time to get the body you want with no money down and payments as low as $33 a month. Call right now for your free video and brochure. Discover the body you've always wanted with the Bowflex Power Pro. Welcome back to Boulder, Colorado. We're at halftime in Colorado, leading Wyoming 10-9. to Hello, everyone. I'm Jim Knox, and one of the toughest things to do in college football is change the play at the line of scrimmage. But help is on the way as Coach Gigatino goes over the proper techniques of calling the audible in today's Artie's Coaching Tips. Blue 14! Blue 14! Hut! Today we're going to talk about what a quarterback does when he wants to change a play at the line of scrimmage. What's he audibling to? What'd you just do there? 
Well, when a defense comes out in certain formations, there's plays that we can't run into that formation. So we have to change the play and get to a play that we can run. The coaches give you the flexibility to change the play at the line of scrimmage? Yeah, that's what we coach all week to, so we can get to the optimum play. What if there's a lot, of, a lot of noise in the stadium? How does the wide receiver know what's going on? How do you know? Well, it's uh, our job as wide receivers to always look in at the ball and to look at what the quarterback's calling at the line as well, look at his uh, hand signals. So you guys have hand signals. Boy, it's a whole new set of communication. Would you do us a favor, go up to the line of scrimmage and change from a pass play to a run play sure okay we have a pass play called right now and they come out with too many defensive backs with only a few down linemen where running the ball presents itself so I'm gonna change to a run play white two white two hut. so today in the second half when you hear the quarterback yell colors at the line of scrimmage it's not the color of his shirt that he's gonna wear on his date tonight Thank you, Coach Artie Gigantino. Up next, a look back at week four of the Big 12. We're at halftime. Colorado leading Wyoming 10-9. Stay with us. Performance, it's my job. You need the right technology. You need the right skills. You need the right equipment. You need the right gasoline. And you need the right motor oil. You need to use your nine iron. Good thing he can drive. Sit, go, says. Go. A commodity is something you trade, not something you drive. The unique Mazda 626. Sporty engineering. Incredible style. A silky automatic. Yeah. And responsive power. Lease for $219 a month. Mazda 626. I want it. The most class, and it's class. Mazda 626. I want it all. Lease for $219 a month. Running is the fastest way to burn fat if you follow these simple steps. Running will power up your energy reserve if you know what pace is best for you. Running will trim your love handles, hips, and thighs. If you call now for this free book, The Complete Runner's Guide, designed for all levels, even if you've never taken a stride, this guide delivers maximum results in minimum time. It's free with your paid subscription to Runner's World. Every issue gets you going with new ideas on improving your performance to finding the perfect shoe. Call for your risk-free trial issue of Runner's World. If you like it, get 11 more for just $17.97. If you're not satisfied, cancel, owe nothing, and keep the free issue. You call now and get a second book free. Burn fat faster. Tone your abs. Lose weight. Drop body fat. The secrets are here. You can burn fat. Gain more energy. Sculpt your body. If you call Runner's World now. Call 1-800-490-0066. Hey, going to the big game? No, I'm not into college football. What? What? Not into college football? Well, let me tell you something. College football is Saturday afternoon. It's crisp fall days. It's the sun reaching its zenith, warming your body paint till it crackles. It's 79,000 hearts. Iowa State, courtesy of number eight, Damon Green. It was a tough week for the conference. Only eight teams in action and only three wins among those. A&M came up big with a 66 to nothing win, so it was a good day to beat this guy. But when the Aggies score nine touchdowns, it's always good to be one of these guys. How was A&M able to pull out the win? Apparently, it was good eyesight. He has the vision that you look for and we're more, more focused. We learned last week that the difference between a Husky and a Husker is more than just the letters I and R. Nebraska ball carriers ran over Husky players, Husky coaches, and when the time calls, even their own players. Tough luck award of the week goes to Texas Tech. Off the hands, off the back of the defender's heel, and in the hands for an interception. 
Oklahoma turns in the long distance play of the week. A 73 yard touchdown pass from Eric Moore to Chris Blucker. Dante Hall of A&M was just three yards away from the honor with his 70 yard punt return against the raging Cajuns of Southern Louisiana. And here's how the Aggies summed up their win Saturday. And doing what we're supposed to do. I mean, that's what we're supposed to do. We did, we did that. And from Baylor coach Dave Roberts, an assessment of his loss against Michigan and what his team must do to win. If we're going to have a chance to win any games, we're going to have to play a lot better than we did Saturday. In their game against Kansas, this Cincinnati player gets the bonehead lateral run of the week with this beautiful 14-yard loss. And his quarterback teammate gets the nod for the worst fake of the week. His prize is a Ron Warner Jayhawk backpack. Iowa State freshman Andy Stensrud put on a touchdown pass-catching clinic Saturday. Here's the two-hand basket catch with the underhand ball toss to the referee. Then there's the one-hand bobble and snag with the option pitch back to the ref. Texas Tech was living just inside the pylon Saturday. Donnie Hart walked the tightrope for a touchdown. Then the special teams blocked a punt and got the friendly Raider bounce past the goal line for the safety. So until we drop anchor next week, that's conference cuts for week five. Up next, we'll rejoin Ron and Artie for a recap of first half highlights. Stay with us. We're at halftime. Colorado leading Wyoming 10-9. Until now, if you had things to store, you could hire an expensive mover. Hey, the meat is running. <laughs> or you could haul it yourself. But now, there's a revolutionary idea from Public Storage Pickup and Delivery. We'll deliver specially designed containers. You fill them, you lock them, we'll pick them up and store them. It's simple and inexpensive. Call Public Storage Pickup and Delivery and get the first month storage for $1. 1844 Store. Honey, I'm going to run out and pick up a lint roller. Hey, hon, what was I going to get? Lint roller. Oh, yeah. Honey, I'm just going to run out and pick up our trophies. This tight-handling, 132-horsepower Dodge Neon you run errands in is the very same one the Sports Car Club of America runs races in. Dodge Neon, under 10.7 for starters, around 13.3, nicely equipped. Michael, you're going to be late for work. No. You know, we're just looking out for you. It's important to be prompt. All right. Hey, don't forget your hat. Oh, thanks, Dad. We love you. I love you, too. Thanks for waiting. You know Pizza Hut gives you 50% more toppings than Domino's. Now a medium's just $8.99, and a second's Hi, five bucks. Dad, I forgot my... Michael. Pizza Hut now accepts all major credit cards. So call today. On the premiere of Honey... Wayne takes the family on a little trip. Honey, oh. I shrunk us. And this time, they'll see Grandpa. Seatbelt! From the inside. <laughs> Honey, we've been swallowed oh. by Grandpa. We get big again in less than two hours. What happens if we're not out of my father by then? We get a full-size van with a brand-new Grandpa paint job. On the premiere of <laughs> Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, the TV show. Premiering tonight at 6 on UPN 20. For the first time this year, the Colorado Buffaloes have the lead at halftime. They lead the Wyoming Cowboys 10-9. Once again, along with Artie Gigantino, I'm Ron Thulin. This is a pretty good football game. Wyoming doing what they need to do, controlling the line of scrimmage. But what stands out, they're holding the football an awful long time. Well, they've had the ball for 19 minutes in the first half. Colorado's only had it for 11. That's exactly what the Wyoming coaching staff wanted to do when they came into this game, Ron, is control the ball, move the chains, and get first downs. Now there's Marcus Brigham on a carry. That set up the first points of the afternoon. That was Corey Weedle kicking a field goal. Weedle Connects on one from 39 yards out. He's a weapon, and the game might come down to his leg. 
And John Hessler, just as he releases the ball, he's hit. Lee picks it off. And Hessler cannot turn the ball over the second half. Otherwise, Colorado is going to be in trouble on offense. That gave him a 6-0 lead. Weedle on a 27-yarder. And then Colorado got something going offensively. Barnes on the touchdown. And Barnes is a good one-two punch to Troutman. And then Weedle again, this time from 52 yards out. That made it a 9-7 ball game. But then Phil Savoy, what a play. What a weapon he is, and they've got to get the ball, Colorado does, to him more in the second half. They've got to get more production in the big play area out of their wide receivers. That play covered 45 yards, resulted in that field goal, and that's where we stand right now. The Buffaloes leading the Wyoming Cowboys 10-0. Second half, straight ahead. Stay with us. Play it back, rock, rap, fast food, cool, dude. Taste the fun. Movie star, classic car, talk show, Bobby and Ken will twist again. Easter replay. Now is the time. Now is the time. This is the place. Dr. Pepper. This is the taste. Dr. Pepper. Now is the time. This simple looking device is the key to unlock your body's hidden potential. It can change the look and shape of every line and curve on your body. Because it's the weight, the challenge, and the secret behind one of the most effective fitness machines in the world. Introducing the Bowflex Power Pro. Bowflex uses patented power rod resistance to give you an incredibly smooth, natural feel for over 60 different health club quality exercises. With features like a built-in aerobic rowing exercise, convertible grips, and convenient folding capabilities, it's easy to see why a Bowflex was selected by Fitness Magazine as the best home gym for 1997 and was awarded a Consumer's Digest Best Buy. It's time to get the body you want with no money down and payments as low as $33 a month. Call right now for your free video and brochure. Discover the body you've always wanted with the Bowflex Power Pro. For the next ghost stories. Why does she keep coming to me? What does she want? A determined psychiatrist is haunted by a troubled ghost. She was in a long burgundy dress like something from another time. And discovers a secret passage back to a forgotten era. Alice Beecher died a long time ago. Classic tales of horror and suspense on Ghost Stories. Premiering Sunday night at 10.30 on UPN 20. So that you can go to these extremes, we've gone to some of our own. Introducing the ultimate Jeep event, where right now you can lease an award-winning Jeep Cherokee, made even better with over 40 advancements, including an all-new interior. Plus, Cherokee offers unsurpassed horsepower and the most four-wheel drive choices in its class, all for just $239 a month. So now, more than ever, Jeep can take you to extremes. Still a lot of football left to be played in Boulder, Colorado, but right now the Buffaloes entertaining a homecoming crowd of over 50,000 lead 10 to 9. Let's take a look at other scores from around college football. Florida leading Kentucky, North Carolina. Boy, that was a close game for a while. And Notre Dame, will they break the two-game losing skid? Ohio State beat Missouri. And later, Central Florida will take on Auburn. In the Big 12, Texas winners over Rice, Kansas State thumping Bowling Green. Texas A&M having their hands full with North Texas there at intermission. And so are we. But our second half is coming up in just about three minutes. Stay with us. Yeah, I'll be leaving on the 18th. Sometime in the morning, back on the 21st. And what's the last flight out? Oh, what's the one before that? Perfect. Yeah, go ahead and book that one. You know, Dad, this isn't brain surgery. Now Southwest Airlines gives you the freedom to plan and purchase your flight online. It's so easy. Even a grown-up can do it. Now all you need is the confirmation number. Can I go play now? You are now free to move about the country. Oh, bathroom. Oh, bathroom, bathroom, bathroom. Oh, yes. Where you stay, shouldn't be.
Fairfield Inn by Marriott. Weekends are for relaxing and spending time with family and friends. But for most homeowners, it's the only time to straighten out personal finances. That's why First Plus is open on the weekends. Every weekend, we're available when you're at home thinking about consolidating bills or financing home improvements. Just call 1-800-510-PLUS. You can apply today right over the phone, and there's no application fees. First Plus takes care of business seven days a week, just like you do. At First Plus, we're working first for you. Call 1-800-510-PLUS. These days, it seems like everything is the official something of somebody. What's next? The official soft drink? The team mascot? Look at this guy right here. And this one here. And his girlfriend and his kid. See? See, they're drinking Dr. Pepper just because it tastes great. It's kind of the official soft drink of everyone else. Like this guy with the bratwurst. He executes a one-handed switch. You can't coach this stuff. It's a thing of beauty. I do that. What's going on? Hey. Hello, I'm John Beekner, president of the University of Colorado. You know, it's easy to get the big picture from up here. But here, in the daily life of a university, we face new realities in higher education. Our classrooms can no longer be bounded by walls. Classrooms of the future must extend from cyberspace to the daily challenges of our communities. And from deep space to the inner reaches of each mind. It's a total learning environment. It's the University of Colorado. Wyoming about a 15-point underdog. They trail by just one. We're at halftime, 10-9. Colorado leads just a moment ago. Jim Knox talked with Dana Dimmel. All right, Coach, you said one of the keys in winning today's game, you had to be able to run the ball. You guys are running the ball nicely right now on only trail 10-9. Well, we're, we're not happy with the way we've played because we're behind. We've been down inside the red zone twice and had to settle for field goals with mental mistakes. So we're concerned about that. We're going to come out and play with a lot more intensity this second half. All right, best of luck, Coach. Run. All right, Jim, let's take a look at some of the numbers from the first 30 minutes of play. Ralphie making his way around Folsom Field, the Sitco stats. My favorite mascot in all of college football, <laughs> big old Ralphie. And our Sitco stats, you can see the time of possession, 19 minutes to 11 minutes. That is the number one thing there, but I'll tell you, Colorado cannot have more of those. No more turnovers because the team that plays efficiently in the second half now, Ron, will end up winning this game, and it could come down to special teams where I really believe Wyoming has a large advantage. Now Colorado deferred the opening kickoff, so they will receive the second half kickoff for Rick Neuheisel and company. Neuheisel in his fourth year. Here at Colorado, third as head coach. Ten and two the previous years. Kelly and Barnes. Kelly, a couple of yards deep. Marlon Barnes says, uh-uh, stay right there. A little grade on John Hessler in that first half, coach. Well, I'm going to give him a B because the one thing he did do, he avoided some sacks, and I think that really helped Colorado keep some drives alive because they would have been big time negative plays. I don't think he's played great, but he's been fairly efficient, and like I said, he's avoided some disasters with his escapability that never shows up in the stats. Of course, they're coming off that loss to Michigan. Fewest points since 88 versus Nebraska. Worst non-conference loss since 84 Notre Dame. They've had two weeks to think about it, chew on it. Trying to make amends this afternoon. And Hessler's going to keep it on the ground. Troutman bouncing around the left side. Brian Brown picks him up. Not before Troutman picks up five. And that was their two tight end offense that they want to come out and reestablish, quote, control of this football game. And the one thing that that two tight end offense does, it gives you balance in terms of going left, going right, going to either tight end. And John Hessler and Rick Neuheisel are very comfortable with that formation. And I think Rick Neuheisel would like to see get the tight ends of football a little bit more. They haven't caught a lot of passes right now. Troutman trying to bounce out the right side. He's going to be swarmed over by a very aggressive Cowboy defense. Mike Graham leading the charge along with Greg Van Leer from the strong safety spot. That was a stretch play, and what it does, it's a handoff deep in the backfield. In fact, it came out, it almost looked like an option, but he hands the ball off very, very deep, and he tries to get outside. That's a good job that time by McCartney of holding the defender. The, the official doesn't call it. He does a good job of staying with his buck. But that play, to me, develops too slow, and it gives the defense time to get there. I'd throw that one out of my offense. It's third and two. 
Colorado just one of five on these occasions. Kessler bumping into people in the backfield, but Trotman's able to bust it over the 30. Down at the 31-yard line, first and 10 for Colorado. That was a good old-fashioned two-back power play, and they talked so much in the preseason about going the two-backs, and one of the fullbacks is Darren Fisk, number 43. He's 6'1", 235 pounds. He is what I call a gib, a guard in the backfield, That's because right. they're never going to give him the ball. In fact, his coach, Kennedy Pola, is standing next to him. Kennedy looks like a gib himself. <laughs> He was. And of course, he was showing everybody his picture from his USC days the other day during practice. Nice hair, Kennedy. First and 10, balls on the 31. Kessler is pressured, bounces off one tackle, stays on his feet. Penalty flag. Oh, that's a piece of paper blown around down there. But Kessler, what a job. Robbie Duncan, who was in the Atlanta Braves organization, finally brings him down. But one more time, Ron, he makes a sacker miss him, and he escapes and turns it into positive yardage. But the one thing that's happening, that they are coming so clean, the guys from Wyoming, they've got to slow down and bring themselves under bounds. He's doing a great job, Duncan, but come and wrap up and bring your legs with you. He hits his upper body and then just bounces off. He's only 5'9", 186. But that's great strength by Hessler. And Duncan's got to go hit him a little bit higher. You know what? Dana Dimmel even said that he's got to teach his guys to tackle better. Whistle, penalty flags being thrown. That's one of the things that the defensive coordinator, Vic Koenig, and Dana Dimmel wanted to do was teach him how to tackle better and they were emphasizing that to you and I the other day they were but it's a difficult thing to practice because you don't want to get guys hurt in practice and it's really hard in practice to teach somebody how to sack a quarterback because obviously you don't want to injure someone in practice so those are skills that are very very hard to teach but they're a necessary evil to play successful on defense they'll push Colorado back five yards second down and eight they wanted to be more balanced on second down as far as their play calling, let's see. Severini to the right. They throw it across. Anderson, almost a spectacular play, but it's picked off. Robbie Duncan on the pick, off the hands of Chris Anderson. Duncan's first pick of the year. I think it was off the hands of Javon Green, number 19, it was. And he's got to catch that, Ron. The ball was in his hands, and Duncan was just given a gift. But Duncan had great concentration, but Green has got to learn to catch that pass because it wasn't that poor a pass. It was a little bit behind him, but he's got to slow down a little bit and come back and catch the ball. And as I said, it was a gift that popped right into Duncan's hands. Second pick of the day off John Hessler. Wyoming, good field position again, and they're dunked behind the line of scrimmage. Mike Phillips on the stop. He's holding up with that shoulder. Banged up, got it taped up. He's a guy that took over from Matt Russell. They said he's much more active, and they sort of try to get the defense where they can use his abilities, which he's a lot more versatile than Russell. Well, he can run faster from sideline to sideline, so the philosophy this year is to force the ball outside with the defensive tackles so he can make plays off tackle instead of inside on the guards. And there's Rick Neuhausel talking it over with his pupil. Right across the middle, the pass is incomplete right into the hands of number 83, Wendell Montgomery, the first incompletion of the afternoon for Silka or for Stoner. You know, I asked the coaches the other day in Wyoming what the biggest problem they're having right now on offense, and they said, we're dropping passes. And they didn't have a stat for me, so I said to them, how many passes have your wide receivers dropped? And all one of the coaches said to me was, too many. <laughs> and you know, it's interesting because Wyoming threw the ball so well last year and the right. year before, but the change in emphasis, I think, has had an effect on how they catch the football. Third down and 10. They were disappointed with their wide receivers during spring ball. Stoner straight drop is going to be hassled. He is going to be dropped. That is only the fifth sack allowed by the Wyoming line. Ryan Olson is the guy who gets it. He's been kind of quiet today, but he's a good football player. He's a strong guy. He was all Big 12 in 1996. He's a guy that really solidifies that inside of the Colorado defense. In fact, he's one of the strongest guys I've ever seen. He squats over 600 pounds, and he can bench press 445 pounds. 
Aaron Langley, 62 and 43 in his previous efforts. Set to kick it away. And he gets a high spiral. Troutman calling for the fair catch at about the seven yard line, and that's where Colorado will begin play. 10 23 here in quarter number three. Colorado still leads by one. On the all new wild things across the African desert, get wild with a rampaging element. In a remote section of the Alaskan coast, get wild with a hungry grizzly. And in the shark infested waters of Danger Point, get wild with a great white. Just the thought of being with such an enormous animal, it's an incredible experience. Answer the call of the wild on Wild Things. Premiering Sunday at 9 on UPN 20. I'm Ed McCaffrey. I catch footballs for a living. Now, I've found it's a lot easier to actually catch footballs when my quarterback is happy. So, to keep mine happy, I go to McDonald's for their two-for-two two deal. I can get two Big Macs for $2. I can get two Quarter Pounders with cheese for $2. Or I can mix and match. I can even get two Egg McMuffins for only $2. That way, I can bring one back to my quarterback. He'll throw me better passes. I'll become famous. Then he'll start bringing me Big Macs. Yeah, probably not. America, the best auto parts store in America, guaranteed. Don't miss our grand opening now. Big 12 football is brought to you by Mazda. Experienced cars and trucks built with a passion for the road. Mazda. By Southwest Airlines with Fair Solo, you have the freedom to go places. And by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper, this is the taste. Southwest of the city is Lake Dillon. A serene setting. Makes you want to buy a granola bar and a John Denver album. <laughs> it's not really. That's pretty well yeah, well, you know, I, I can think of a few other things that, <laughs> that I might want to have there, but I won't say that right now. Oh, you got to go to Juanita's for that. Yeah, right. 10 9 is our score. 10 23 left to play in the third quarter. Jim Knox, Artie Gigantino, and Ron Thule coming your way from an absolutely spectacular Saturday afternoon in Boulder, Colorado. John Hessler begins right on about the seven yard line. Right up the middle to Herschel Trotman. Oh, top to Von Cooper, the fullback. You know, when Cooper's in the game, he's the running fullback and the catching fullback. He's 5'11, 200. But he was a tailback in high school, so he's a guy in the game that they don't mind giving the ball to at the fullback position. But when the other guy's in the game, Fisk. They never give him the ball. And I think at times they've gotten a little predictable, Colorado has, with some of the two-back things that they've done. Well, Colorado has some injuries. Chris Anderson, the wide receiver, very talented. Hamstring pull, he's not going to return. Colorado keeps it on the ground. Trotman has stood up right at the 10-yard line. You know, another factor that not many people talk about that has been a problem for the Colorado running game is the death of assistant coach Ben Gregory. He died last summer, last, at the end of last spring, and he was kind of the running coach and Rick Neuheisel's confidant in the running game. And I, I've been told by a couple of people that his knowledge and his wisdom of running the football is really being missed by this Colorado offense right now. Third down and seven ball. They're going to call it the 11-yard line. Two wide receivers left, one to the right. Hester play action, pressured, and he is going to be dropped at the five. Wyoming with 22 sacks coming into the game. Gets one from Pat Hirsch. Stuart Hansen put on the first hit. That's the first sack of the day. They've had a number of chances. They've had a number of chances, but they can get up the field, and this is where you want to really put pressure on now in the third and fourth quarters. And Hanson just misses them, but he, what he does, he forces them up into Hirsch, who then gets credit with the sack. Hirsch is their bandit linebacker. He's a redshirt freshman, and his nickname is Gumpy. I love that. I do, too. It's because of the way he runs. Nick Peach kicks it away from his own end zone. Best kick of the afternoon. Fielded by Jenkins. He is going to be dropped at the 44-yard line, and that's where 
Wyoming will begin with 8.14 left to play in quarter number three. 43-yard kick, four-yard return. We'll return to Folsom Field after this work from Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottle. Turn it up, love to pump, slam dunk. In my own life, to the net, Dr. Pepper taste to get. Blue jean, fly machine, football huddle, space show. Free to vote. A commodity is something you trade, not something you drive. The unique Mazda 626. Mazda 626. Sporty engineering. Oh. Incredible style. A silky automatic. Yeah. And responsive power. Oh. Lease for $219 a month. Mazda 626. I want it. The most class in its class. Mazda 626. I want it all. Lease for $219 a month. Yeah, I know about performance. You need the right technology. You need the right equipment. You need reliability. You need the right gasoline. And you need the right skills. You need to trim the bushes. Sitco says go. surprised. If you're a Wyoming fan, you may be ecstatic. Colorado leads 10-9. We are in the third quarter, and mainly because of Wyoming's defense. Well, Dana Dimmel said he's going to emphasize defense first in this program, and so far, that emphasis is paying off for him. Robbie Duncan with the pick here just a moment ago. And Colorado with a sack. Good defense. Ryan Olsen with a sack. So it's been quite the defensive struggle, as we had thought it would be. And then it's John Essler, the victim of a sack. Pat Hirsch is a young guy, but he plays enthusiastically, and he's a guy that puts a lot of pressure on quarterbacks. And you know, they've only got one sack today, Wyoming, but they should have five. Oh, yeah. You can see the field position. Wyoming is at great field position. Colorado's been deep in their own territory as Jeremy Silcox back in a quarterback. Haven't seen him since the opening quarter. Bring him on the carry. You know, I'm surprised that they haven't played him a little bit sooner because I thought that was a pressure situation to put uh, Stoner in. Silcox has at least got some experience, and I don't think he's going to win the game for you, but he's certainly not going to lose it. Whereas the other guy, Stoner, could come in and maybe make the great play, but he also might make the huge mistake that ends up losing the game. So it's a tough call for the coaches, but I agree with this now. Get Silcox back in the game. Well, like we saw last week with R.C. Slocum saying for Texas A&M, it's a field thing when you put him in. Bring him in Patolo in the backfield. Silcox. Pass is complete. The number six, Julian Hooker out of Homeward, Illinois. Hurt all of last year. Was a wide receiver in high school. Now playing the tight end spot. And, you know, Hooker is one of the great-looking guys on this team. He's a tight end here. He's going to come across the field and find his way in the middle of the zone and get open. The ball is perfectly delivered, but don't forget, Hooker is a tight end, but he came as a wide receiver at 190 pounds, so he knows how to do that. He's a good-looking prospect. That's the first reception over 10 yards. Brigham, right side, dumped after he crosses the 30. Let's check in with Jim Knox. Ron Folsom Field has to be one of the toughest places to play a college football game for opposing teams. The reason why, you're literally just two steps away from the bench. Now, you get 51,000 screaming fans in here, and that causes a major headache for opposing teams. One of the reasons why, Colorado has one of the best winning percentages at home in the past eight years. I'll tell you another reason why there's no track in here. There is. Yeah, so, you know. uh, Oklahoma uh, field is exactly like that. You're right on top of the stands. Second down and six. Ball's out of the 27th. 635 to play here in the third quarter. Brigham. Up 
over the middle, maybe got one, maybe two yards. Murkison on the tackle. Well, nothing fancy about what Wyoming's trying to do here. They're trying to pound it up inside, pound it up inside, and then try to make the first down and move the chains. Now it's third and three. But the one thing that just stands out to me here, Ron, the offensive lineman and the offensive unit of Dana Dibbles is walking back to the huddle. They're trying to use as much time as they possibly can. They were a four-touchdown underdog at Ohio State. They killed the spread on that one. Third and three. The option. Nice call. Brigham, 25, reaches forward to the 23, and he is down. It shouldn't be a fumble. Brian Sutter on the stop. And that won't be enough for a first down. Still be about three yards short. You know, that looked like an audible at the line of scrimmage. It was a good job by Sutter, who had an injury a couple weeks ago against Michigan made a nice play coming up. In fact, he had orthoscopic surgery the Monday after the Michigan game. And you know what he said? He said having surgery was fun. I said, <laughs> what are you, nuts or tough? He said he's a little bit of both, but he's a good football player that came here as a walk-on, and right now he leads his team with 41 tackles. Well, Weedle already has three field goals to his credit, trying to make it four. This is spotted at the 30. It will be a 40-yard attempt. May have been tipped, but it is still good. I think Ben Kelly may have just got a finger on it. We're not going to be able to see it till the replay, but still, Weedle has the big, strong leg, and he's given Wyoming the lead again. 5.04 to play in the third. Wyoming leads at 12 10. Performance, it's my job. You need the right technology. You need the right skills. You need the right equipment. You need the right gasoline. And you need the right motor oil. You need to use your nine iron. Good thing he can drive. Sit go, says. Go. When I was growing up in Pittsburgh, my father always told me to do business with people who are reliable and stand behind their product. Some things never change. That's right, Dad. That's why I work with First Plus. They're experienced, dependable, and dedicated. They'll get you the best loan to meet your needs. If you're a homeowner looking to consolidate bills or make home improvements, call First Plus. You can count on them to make the loan that's just right for you. And I thought you only listened to your mother. <laughs> call First Plus at 1-800-510-PLUS. Play it back, rock, rap, fast food, cool, dude. More than one home run, Dr. Pepper, taste the fun. Movie star, classic car, talk show, Bobby and Ken, we'll twist again. Easter replay. Now is the time. Now is the time. This is the place. Dr. won seven straight games versus the WAC, 10 of the last 11 since 87, but right now they trail 12-10. Just about five minutes left to play in quarter number three. Barnes and Kelly set to receive the kickoff. Once again in the end zone, and Kelly's going to bring this one out from five yards deep. Up to the 20. Tries to scamper down the sidelines. He ran out of running room. Let's take a look at Weedle again. Even when he kicks it bad, it still goes through. I know. You know, the guy just has a way of getting it through the uprights. That is not a good kick, like you said. It looks like it didn't come off of his leg solid, but it looks like somebody's blowing it that way because it ends up going between the uprights. Boy, Kelly came flying in. Thought he may have gotten a piece of it. Didn't look on the replay that he nicked it. Weedle can only smile. And Colorado quickly to the line of scrimmage. Inside of five minutes. At times, Colorado has looked very in control, very efficient play on offense, but at times they haven't looked good. Two tight ends. Hessler, straight drop, lots of time. Pump fakes, throws it into the ground, and it is incomplete. 
Stuart Hansen was the guy putting the pressure on John Hessler, and this is kind of like deja vu of Michigan. Yeah, it is. And John Hessler made a smart play there of throwing the ball away. He could have been sacked if he would have held on to it. Obviously, he didn't throw it at anybody, and so it could have been intercepted. But that is a good, smart, heads-up play by him. And I tell you, last week or two weeks ago at Michigan, he was harassed. He had 17 quarterback pressures on him. He was sacked three times. So he took a real beating that day at Michigan. Well, he has six quarterback pressures today. Hessler again back. Pass is complete. Up to the 30, 35, finally out at the 40-yard line. It's Robert Toller of Long Beach, California. How did he get so wide open as Jeff Leonard was once again was in Hessler's face? Well, obviously there was some kind of assignment error on that because uh, Wyoming was in some type of blitz. And Toller ran from the inside to the outside away from the man coverage. It's a good job by Hessler of seeing him and delivering the football right on target. And again, it's a good run after the catch by Toller, but Wyoming can't afford to make mistakes like that and give up big plays to Colorado's offense. Pick up a 22 on the play. Ball out to the 42-yard line. Hessler on first down is going to put it up in the air again. Lots of time. Lost it intended for Severini, and the pass is incomplete. Brian Lee was right there with Severini. You know, that's an example, though, of Colorado maybe being a little too impatient. You know, they get a first down, and they're moving the chains a little bit. Now they want to go downtown again. Now they put themselves in second and ten situations where, Col where Wyoming can now blitz them or just rear it up and go rush the passer. And that's not a very good throw by Hessler. And every time a quarterback gets pounded a few times and gets knocked down, he never comes back with a good throw. The more you hit a quarterback, the less likely he's going to throw good passes following that hit. Now there's some cute confusion on who should be in. Stiggers, a late addition to the wide receiving court. He goes up left side of your screen. From the two-back set, Troutman lunging up to about the 48-yard line. Pick up a five out of play. Let's take a look at scores from around the country. Iowa has defeated Illinois. Virginia Tech all over Arkansas State. That is a final. Number 18, Kansas State has beaten Bowling Green. BYU leading SMU in the third. Alabama by 11 over Southern Miss in the fourth. A&M's got a touchdown up on North Texas. That's in the third. That surprises me a little bit. I thought A&M yep. would be winning that game, you know, a lot more easier than they're doing right now. Of course, Colorado and A&M meet next week. Third and five. Inside of four minutes left in the third. Hessler. Off the fingertips, pass is incomplete, intended for Brody Hefner. Colorado was expecting a blitz that time, and Wyoming did not blitz. They played zone defense. They only rushed the front four guys, and that confused John Hessler, which is why he threw it into coverage. Nice job up front by the Wyoming defensive front guys, which who, who, Nick, who call themselves, quote, the rushmen of putting pressure on John Hessler. John Hessler has got to get a little bit better protection from that offensive line. Nick Peach set to kick it away. A couple of 43 yarders this afternoon. Mike Jenkins standing on his own 10 yard line. Peach this time gets a spiral. Jenkins calling for a fair catch. Goes into the end zone. Nice job by Jenkins when he called the fair catch. Some of the Colorado players kind of hesitated instead of going for the end zone. Let's take a look at Colorado's schedule. Of course, next week, A&M comes up to the Mile High City. That ought to be one great game. And, you know, then they go to Oklahoma State, play Kansas here at Texas, and then Missouri. Colorado, though, has got to win this game because you don't want to have to play Texas A&M next week with a 1-2 and two record and everybody in the world mad at you like they, they found out last oh, yeah. week here. It'll be interesting to see if they do lose the game today, how that man reacts, because he's a fun guy and a loose guy, but that's when you're winning. <laughs> that's right, exactly. 12-10 is our score. Silcox remains the quarterback, Mike Jenkins. All alone, the fake. Silcox is going to be dragged down from behind by number 57, Nick Ziegler. They call him the free spirit, the overachiever, but what he is is a pretty good defensive end. 
you know, it was a good play by Ziegler, but Silcox is not a guy who is a guy who can get on the corner that fast. And I'm surprised that Wyoming is running bootlegs with him. He is more of an inside drop back guy, a steady Eddie. He's not the athlete to get out on the corner like that. But give the credit to Ziegler because he did a nice job of running him down and pulling him to the ground. And I'll tell you, the coaches were a little critical of Ziegler. They didn't think he's having a great year, not making enough big plays, but that certainly was a big play. Well, they're playing the kind of defense A.J. Kristoff wants, aggressive but yet disciplined. Silcox, pass is complete, but we have penalty flags. The play won't stand. We're going to bring it back again. Let's listen in and see what the call is. Prior to the snap, false start, offense, still second down. One thing that Colorado wanted to do, Artie, might want to explain, they wanted to play what they call a balanced defense. Well, by that, by a balanced defense, you want four guys on one side, four on the other, and a center fielder in the middle. And the reason is because Wyoming stretches you out with wide receivers, tight ends, and just like in that last formation, there were no backs in the backfield, just the quarterback. So you got to be balanced because that allows you to be a little bit more sound. And I think sometimes Colorado this year, according to Andy Christoff, they've probably gotten a little too complicated and then confused themselves. Second and 20, Silcox is pressured. He is hit as he lets it go, incomplete, no penalty flag. Nice job by Jesse Warren coming in from that defensive end spot to put the pressure on. Warren, a sophomore out of Dallas, Texas, his first quarterback pressure today. And you know, Warren is not a starter, but it fits into the philosophy of Tim Hundley, the defensive line coach, of rotating defensive linemen so they can be fresh and rush the passer in the third and fourth quarter. Now that was supposed to be a screen, which is why he came in so clean, but Silcox didn't get back quick enough and didn't get rid of the football. The red and court wide to the left, Brunson wide to the right. Third down and 20. Penalty flags, people are jumping. See, now, Wyoming doesn't want this to happen. We've had two negative plays. They're starting to come apart, and Colorado's defensive front is starting to take over the game. Moving back a few more yards. Still third down. And, you know, for Wyoming, they've had such great field position most of the game, but if they have to punt from their own end zone, Colorado's going to get the ball in great field position around the 50. Now the cul culprit, I think, was Shane Glosher, number 71, the right tackle. You know, right over here, he moves a little bit too soon. And again, it's hard to hear because there's a lot of noise down there. That's why he's got to get his inside eye, that eye right there. He's got to look at the football. Brunson wide to the left. Jenkins in the backfield. Colorado brings the bunch. Pass is going to be complete to Wendell Montgomery. He is hit hard at the 15 and knocked out of bounds. Well short of the first down. Well, that was a big stop right here for Andy Kristoff's defenders. And, you know, it's going to get the crowd back into the game. And he's done a great job with this defense. Coach Blitz, as they call him, blitzed a couple of times on that series and made some big plays. And he's happy about it. Now and he, only, he ought to be. Oh, yeah. He only gave up 142 yards rushing to Michigan, about 3.46 a carry. They like that. I would, too, if I yeah. helped Michigan to that. Troutman set to receive the kick. Langley, an end over ender. Troutman at the 45, stumbles, crosses midfield, still on his feet. And he's going to be stood up and brought down at about the 47-yard line. A 41-yard kick, eight on the return. Well, Dana Dimmel said this game against Colorado will set the tone for the rest of the season. Let's take a look at their schedule. Montana, then at Nevada, then Colorado State. That's going to be a shootout. You know, and they've had, they're going to have 13 games this year without a bye. And that this is the toughest schedule in the history of the University of Wyoming. And the amazing thing about the 13 games, seven of them are away. Yeah. So that's a tough schedule, no buys. But, you know, I asked him about it. He says, hey, what the heck, let's go play the games. He loved it. Daniel Dimmel giving an official something to think about. Besser, one back set. Best field position Colorado has had, and they're not going to take advantage of it, at least on this play. Troutman is stacked up. Leonard on the stop. Leonard out of 
California. He's strong. He's powerful. Was second team all whack in the Pacific Division last year. No, he's another strong guy. He squats 700 pounds and bench presses 400. He's out of Chabot Junior College out in Hayward, California. That's where I'm from. And he's a good football player. But you know what I like about him? His intensity level. Yeah. The other day in practice, he had dirt all over him. He had sweat coming out of his <laughs> helmet. He's a guy that goes 100 miles an hour, and you got to just love it. Bunch of people in the box for Wyoming, and here they come. Hessler steps up, and he is going to be dropped again. Ball is loose. Let's see who's got it. Wyoming got the football. Well, Jim Talich, number 94, the senior out of Pine Bluffs, Wyoming, right in the middle of things, trying to grab it away. They said he's an instinct player. Stuart Hansen had the sack. Talich is Johnny on the spot. You know, Hansen's another guy. He's like Leonard. Those guys are almost identical, and Talich is almost like those other two guys. They're lunch pail defensive football players, tough guys that aren't great athletes, but they do everything right. And Talich always seems to be around the football when it's on the ground. Here the ball just comes right to him, and he jumps on it. Wasted field position for Colorado. Yeah, big time waste. Second man through, it's Brigham. Not much, maybe a yard and a half. You know, the Wyoming coaches felt that their defensive line handled Ohio State's offensive line, but they also felt coming into this game, just from observing film, that their defensive line could handle Colorado's offensive line. Because one of the criticisms of Colorado's offensive linemen is they're soft. They're not a bunch of real big guys. They're very athletic, but they're soft. And if you had to say soft or hard, I'd say Wyoming's defensive front is hard. Second down and eight, Brunson and Montgomery, the top of your screen. Silcox tosses it out of the flat. It'll be incomplete, intended for Marcus Brigham. And that'll be the last play of the third quarter. We still have 15 minutes left, and we got a dandy. Wyoming leads Colorado by two. These days, it seems like everything is the official something of somebody. What's next? The official soft drink? The team mascot? Look at this guy right here. And this one here. And this girlfriend and this kid. See? See, they're drinking Dr. Pepper just because it tastes great. It's kind of the official soft drink of everyone else. Like this guy with the bratwurst. He executes a one-handed switch. You can't coach this stuff. It's a thing of beauty. Hey, who's doing that? I do that. What's going on? Weekends are for relaxing and spending time with family and friends. But for most homeowners, it's the only time to straighten out personal finances. That's why First Plus is open on the weekends, every weekend. We're available when you're at home thinking about consolidating bills or financing home improvements. Just call 1-800-510-PLUS. You can apply today right over the phone, and there's no application fees. First Plus takes care of business seven days a week, just like you do. At First Plus, we're working first for you. Call 1-800-510-PLUS. Who cares for the past or behind? Wouldn't you love to be free? To go wherever your whims take you. Whenever you want, for any reason at all. Drifting along with a tumbling tumbleweed. With Southwest, you can. You are now free to move about the country. Going to the big game? No, I'm not into college football. What? What? Not into college football? Well, let me tell you something. College football is Saturday afternoon. It's crisp fall days. It's the sun reaching its zenith, warming your body paint till it crackles. It's 79,000 hearts beating as one. Would you please take it down a notch? so I can talk to the lad. Thank you. I want to get you to that game. I want to talk to you about football. Big 12 football has been brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper, this is the taste. And by Southwest Airlines, with fares so low, you have the freedom to go places. Directly behind the stadium, the Flatirons, they call them. And behind the press box, you can see exactly where that shot was taken from. Just an absolutely gorgeous setting as we begin the fourth quarter, along with Jim Knox and Artie Gigantino. I'm Ron Thulin. Colorado has not lost two in a row in a long time and they're trying to avoid that right now last time they did it was 93. 
Third down and eight for Wyoming. Zilcox is hit as he gets rid of the ball. Mike Phillips coming right up the middle to put the pressure on Jeremy Silcox. That was a, a formation where there were no backs in the backfield. And when that happens, Phillips automatically blitzes, which is exactly what he did there. Colorado brought six guys on the blitz, but there's only five blockers left the block. So he is clean to the quarterback, and he did a wonderful job of getting his hands up. Boy, both coaches are going to have a lot to talk about Monday. Wasted opportunities. Aaron Langley, the high kick that will sail not only in but out of the end zone. And Colorado will begin first and ten on their own 20 yard line. Officially 42 yards on the kick. He's another one between he and Weedle. They've got great specialty team play out of Wyoming. Well, you know, you have great specialty teams plays when you have a great kicker or a great returner. And Wyoming has a special teams coach, Chris Knutson, and that's all he does. He doesn't coach the tight ends. He doesn't help with the offensive line. The only thing he does is coach special teams. And I think that has a great effect on how you're playing. A lot of programs don't have special teams coaches. They have a guy that does it along with coaching something else. Stiggers wide left, Cheverini in the slot, Troutman the lone setback. Kessler putting it up on first down. Pass is complete up to the 30-yard line, and that'll be good enough for a first down to Darren Cheverini. Uncle Tony Cheverini, the former boxer, lost to Sugar Ray Leonard back in the 80s. It's quite a family, and you know, they tell the story of when Rick Neuheisel went to recruit him. His father, who was Eddie Day, and Eddie Day in the night, sat down with Rick Neuheisel, and they recorded a song <laughs> in the recording studio they have in the back of their house. So that was a good recruiting move that time by Rick Neuheisel. But I think it's a great story, and it's a great family. Chevrolet is one tough cookie. I'm first and ten ball in the 31. Kessler again. He's hit immediately, but a catch is made by Severini. Kessler took a hit to the knee right as he released the ball, and Severini came up with a big catch. Well, the one thing that Rick Neuheisel says about John Hessler, he's as tough a quarterback as Troy Aikman was, and that's quite a compliment because he just got drilled on that, and he threw the perfect pass that time to Cheverini. But he gets nailed, and I'm, I'm thankful for him that he didn't injure his knee on this because you're going to see, oh, right into his knee. That's tough. He's a, is the guy got him. Yeah, it's a, he's a tough guy, though, and, you know, he's, he, he's worked very hard this offseason to increase his physicalness. He's put on about 15 pounds, and he's able to take the punishment Wyoming. a little bit more. Wyoming, their first. Well, Wyoming takes the timeout with 14.20 left to play in the ballgame. They lead it by two. Bodies at rest tend to stay at rest. Bodies at motion tend to get thirsty. Now pay attention. Get thirsty, get Gatorade. Get Gatorade, get Gator points. Get Gator points, get Big 12 gear. When you get Big 12 gear, you tend to get noticed by members of the opposite sex. The kind that would otherwise spit in your direction. I've seen it, it happens. So, get Gatorade, get Gator points, get Big 12 gear. Some people enjoy a good challenge. But earning a frequent flyer ticket shouldn't be one of them. At Southwest Airlines, we count quick trips, not long miles. Just eight round trips is all it takes, and you'll be flying free before you know it. Rapid rewards from Southwest Airlines, the quickest, easiest way to earn free travel. You are now free to move about the country. Yeah, I know about performance. You need the right technology. You need the right equipment. You need reliability. You need the right gasoline. And you need the right skills. You need to trim the bushes. Sitco says go. Colorado is 10-1 following opening week since 1985, but right now they trail 
Wyoming 12 10 we're in the fourth quarter let's take a look at our game summary sponsored by Southwest Airlines Weedle school record is six field goals he's four for four perfect afternoon yeah, and he's going to be the MVP here because his afternoon is not over yet but the big statistic in my mind is this one right here time of possession and that one right there excuse me when Colorado has turned the ball over three times well, starting this fourth quarter Wyoming has managed only 162 yards Colorado just over 200 Kessler on first and ten, lofts it up into the sun. Cheverini doesn't have a shot at it. That's another poor throw, though. He throws the ball out of bounds. You can't do that. you got to get the ball on the playing field so the receiver has a chance to run underneath it and make a play. He's done that twice now, and those should be easy throws, especially with the emphasis that Colorado has placed on completing the long ball this week. He just throws the sucker out of bounds. He throws it well, but not up in there, somewhere on the green. Hmm. They still have high expectations for John Hessler, and rightly so. Second and 10, 14 15 left in the ballgame. Hessler fires it away. The pass is complete to Marcus Stiggers. Dancing around, crossing the 45, brought down at the 43 yard line. Brian Brown and Pat Hirsch combined to make the tackle. Well, that's the kind of plays you want now. You want to drill it in there and allow your receivers, like Stiggers, who are very fast and is going to be a big time star in this program, to run after the catch. I think sometimes that they put a little too much pressure on Hessler to make the big play and then he puts pressure on himself to make the big play but you need help from people around you and a running game is one thing and the second thing is getting the ball on shorter passes maybe into the hands of your big time fast receivers pick up a 12 out of play Stiggers first reception from the eye formation Troutman the second back group following the block of Fisk Jeff Boyle a true freshman out of Norton Kansas who is a national champion Greco-Roman wrestler makes the tackle you know, he's a scary guy. I met him the other day. He was a two-time State of Kansas high school champion, and he looks like about a 30-year-old guy, but he's only 19. He's really a powerful, chiseled guy, as the coaches described him, and he's a mean one, which makes him a perfect nose guard. Oh, I did Greco-Roman wrestling at the Olympics. Is it, can you use your, scary guy. Can you use your legs? Can't or use your that, legs. That's the one you can't use your body. legs. Okay. It's scary. Every guy who does that is scary. That's second and nine, ball on the 43. Hessler has some time, now being rushed, throws it over the middle, pass is going to be incomplete. Once again, it's Brian Lee right in the middle of that, but Brian Van Emmerich from that defensive tackle spot put on the uh, pressure on Hessler the eighth time he's had to hurry the ball. And he pays the price again. He gets knocked down as he delivers the football, and a quarterback just cannot take that kind of pounding all day long. And that causes the ball to be thrown a little bit too high. And speaking of wrestlers, Van Emmerich is another guy. He was 45-0 and as a junior and 37-0 and as a senior out of Nebraska as a heavyweight wrestler. You can see the numbers and under pressure today. Two sacks, eight hurries, and a couple of interceptions on third and nine. Kessler, the pass is complete. Good for the first down to Phil Savoy. That time, John Hessler had a little mustard on it. And he also had a little protection, which gave him some time to throw the ball down the field. Play without Anderson because of the hamstring. They need Savoy. Here's the protection. It's a good job by Andrew Walsh, the left offensive tackle, number 74. He keeps his feet moving, gets his hands in there, and almost tackles Van Emmerich. But that's okay because the official didn't call it. But these guys up front... I've been under tremendous criticism because of what happened up in Michigan a week ago. And they've seemed to have improved a little bit today. Well, Cook and Wade are out from the tackling guard spot. So that has caused some problems. Now, Colorado's showing a little bit of confusion. So they have to burn a timeout. 12.34 left to play. We'll return to Folsom Field after this word from Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper Bob. Burn it up. Love to pump. Slam dunk. In my to get new jean fly machine football huddle space shuttle free to vote a commodity is something you trade not something you drive 
unique Mazda 626. Sporty engineering. Incredible style. A silky automatic. And responsive power. Lease for $219 a month. The most class in its class. Mazda 626. Lease for $219 a month. Frequent flights and convenient schedules, Southwest Airlines gives you the freedom to do business out of town during the day. And still, come home at night. Winston, I'm home! You are now free to move about the country. 34 left to play in the ball game. Phil Savoy keeps trying to shake something. It looks like his wrist. I think he might have gotten a helmet on it when he caught that last pass. But, you know, he's back in the game, and so he's a tough guy. Well, first and ten. Colorado knocking on the door. Trying to answer all the questions that came up after that Michigan game. But suffice it to say, if they don't win this game, there's going to be even more. Troutman, left side. One man to beat. Coming up from that safety spot is Brian Lee. Brian Lee was not faked out at all. Watched him the whole time already. He just came up like a missile. Well, he's not only a good center fielder, he's a good run defender, too. He's the complete safety. He does a lot of things well for this football team, and a lot of guys on that team look at him as a leader. That's a great job of seeing it and taking the right angle. Just get your head up a little bit more, Brian, on that tackle, and it would have been a super job. But as an old coach, you got to criticize something, don't you, Ron? Oh, yeah, you have to. Well, he's deceptive, but he's got a great feel for the game. 1996, that's what he did. Six tackles today. Kessler straight back, lots of time. Now he's flushed out of the pocket. Pass is complete. Right up to the original line of scrimmage. Marlon Barnes is the one who made the reception, but once again, Pat Hirsch putting on the pressure. Yeah, our man Gumby here is doing a great job of getting up the field, and he's a guy that's very hard to block because he's a rangy guy that just kind of falls off of blockers, and he's a young guy that twists and turns and just comes up the field and hits Hessler and knocks him down again. These coaches really, really like him. He's put on 20 pounds of muscle since he's been in the Wyoming program. Third down and nine, ball on the 26. Both teams, two timeouts left. Make it one for Colorado. They have to burn another. You know, when these things happen, this is why coaches get criticized, because that looks like bad coaching, because it looks like you're unorganized. Now, someone obviously came in the game that shouldn't have been in the game, but when you have multiple personnel packages, sometimes there's confusion, because one player doesn't hear right. what group is in the game. Now the executive producers of Fox Sports Net, Arthur Smith and Bill Borson. Coordinating producer of College Football Saturday is Roy Hamilton. Today's game was produced by Robert Steinfeld, directed by Kenny Miller. And the head of field operations is Andrea Jenkins. Also like to thank Sports Information Department here at Colorado, Dave Platty. Of all the sports information directors we've worked with, I think he is by far the most recent we've worked with. <laughs> He's the most <laughs> handsome one. Too. He, is, he is the best. He's a good guy. Timeouts remaining. Colorado has had to burn two because of some confusion offensively, so now they only have one. Wyoming still holding on to a couple. You know, and, and one of the things that I thought Colorado was going to try to do is simplify their substitution packages because, again, it's caused some of their problems, and I think offensively it, it doesn't allow you to get into the type of rhythm that you would like to get into. And, you know, they talked about this game was going to kind of be a landmark to say, where are we at? It's going to be a defining game where we're at as a football team. And right now, I'm not sure they're going to be happy with the results. From the shotgun on third and nine, ball on the 26, just over 11 minutes left. Hessler, straight back, steps up in the pocket, and he will be dropped. Number 92, Jeff Boyle, the true freshman, getting help from Jeff Leonard. 
That is a covered sack if I've ever seen exactly. one. They did a wonderful job in the secondary, which is what they talked about doing, of confusing John Hessler with a variety of coverages. That time they were in a zone with what we call a robber, meaning a safety is sitting in the middle at about 10 yards. And you can see John Hessler here dropping back and not able to find someone. Brian Lee, who's in your screen at the beginning of the play, was that robber I was talking about. Jeremy Aldrich made his first field goal today. This is spotted at the 35, a 45-yarder. Not going to get there, and it's going to be wide to the right. And boy, that gave the Wyoming bench a lift. Everybody on that bench just started going crazy. Timeout with 10-15 to play. Wyoming trying to pull off the upset. You've got to learn from the veterans. Yeah, guys like Brian Stiff. But I think he's taking Coach Hanslick's hustle thing a little too far. Hustle, hustle. Come on, let me see. I mean, he's really crazy. Yeah, man, check him out. Now, gotta work, gotta work. Hustle. He's at the kiddies house on the team. Let's go, run, sprint. I feel sorry for his wife, though. Fourteen game superstar packages start at $231. Call 893-6700. Michael, you're gonna be late for work. No. You know, we're just looking out for you. It's important to be prompt. All right. Hey, don't forget your hat. Oh, thanks, Dan. We love you. I love you, too. Thanks for waiting. You know Pizza Hut gives you 50% more toppings than Domino's. Now a medium's just $8.99, and a second's five bucks. Dad, I forgot my... My poem. Pizza Hut now accepts all major credit cards, so call today. Why is the competition so happy? Because Ford's factory authorized clearance ends on October 1st. So hurry down to your Ford dealer for financing as low as 1.9% for cash back up to $2,500. Taurus, Ranger, F-150, Explore, all your Ford favorites. Don't miss your last chance to get financing as low as 1.9% for cash back up to $2,500. This sale is so good, the competition is overjoyed. It's ending. So hurry to the factory authorized clearance at your Rocky Mountain Ford dealer. In the fourth quarter, Wyoming with the football and the lead, and Jeremy Solcox remains in at quarterback. Fans getting a little restless here at Folsom Field. Marcus Brigham being moved over. Right up the middle, big yardage. Brigham crosses the 40, bowls his way up to the 43-yard line. That is Jeremy Silcox at his best, moving him over. He saw something in that Colorado defense, and he made him pay. with Artie's mic, we're going to get it fixed. It's Brigham, this time up to the 45-yard line. Pickup of one on first and ten. 9.45 to play in the bowl game. It has been a knockdown drag out. During the break, we were talking, Artie, we were talking during the break that even if Colorado comes back and wins this football game, and there's still a lot of time left, there are still going to be so many questions about this football team that Rick Neuheisel is going to have to answer. Yeah, and the, and the biggest problem right now is the physicalness offensively and defensively of Colorado because Wyoming is being more physical than Colorado today. Second and eight, ball out of 45 from the shotgun. Silcox takes a couple steps back. Wobbly pass is going to be almost picked off incomplete. Jim Knox on the sideline. What do you have? During that last series, Ron, John Hessler, the Colorado quarterback, came limping off the field, gasping for air. He has really taken a beating today, and it's going to be interesting to see how many more shots he can take before John Hessler really stays, to the si at, stays on the sideline for the rest of the game. Good point. Wow. And, you know, that's two weeks in a row, and obviously he didn't get pounded at all during practice the last two weeks, but he really suffered a beating up at Michigan. Third down and eight. With six guys on the line of scrimmage. Here they come. Silcox being pressured. The pass is complete. First down, Wyoming. In Colorado territory, down to the 42 is Wendell Montgomery. 
great poise that time by Silcox. He was under tremendous pressure, but he had the poise, the experience, the maturity to get rid of the football and hit Montgomery. That is all on the quarterback right there of throwing the ball off of his back foot under pressure. 16 yards on the pickup. See, that's why I think they've got to keep Silcox in the game. Right. And maybe they put Stoner in a little bit too soon. I'm not sure Stoner could have done that. Keep it on the ground. Brigham looking for some kind of running room. Maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage before Ben Kelly comes up to put up a stop set. And now you're going to see Wyoming really try to slow this game down. I mean, they're not going to run out the clock, so to speak, but they're going to slow the tempo of this game down as much as they possibly can. Because all they need here is another 10 yards, and they bring in our little lefty kicker right. to get free. And that guy, Dana Dimmel, the head coach at Wyoming, knows that. Haven't won here in Boulder since 1982, the Wyoming Cowboys. First time they've been three and one this time of the year since 86 when Dennis Erickson was coach. Brigham in the flat. Oh, that was dangerous. Oh, have mercy. Mike Phillips, we've got a penalty flag thrown on the play. I think it may be rough on the passer. I think you're absolutely right, Ron, and that is an ignorant foul by oh. Colorado. But Mike Phillips, if he would have picked that off, that would have been even more disappointing because Phillips had that thing sniffed out from the get-go. You know, I've, I've never minded penalties, but I minded ignorant penalties, things that can be avoided that are just stupidity on the part of the player. Roughing the passer, the defense, automatic first down. Mm. Let's look at it again from up top. Now Silcox gets the snap out of the shotgun, throws the ball, and that is clearly a laid hit. And you can't do that. You gotta have more control of yourself in situations like this, especially when the score is 12 to 10 with eight minutes left yeah. in the fourth quarter and you're losing. Poise, poise, poise. I guess it's easy to talk about, but hard to do. It is, especially, I think, when you're struggling because you're, I think, the Colorado players, they are great kids, and we can't emphasize that enough. And they want something good to happen, and sometimes you start pressing. And they work very hard oh. in their bye week. Now, first and 10 on the 27, Wyoming sitting in the catbird seat. Jenkins, he has been quiet this afternoon. Can you get a uh, replay on that? Jenkins, not much running room today. Silcox has done a nice job. Played early on in the game. Didn't see a lot of action as Stoner was in the ball game. Now Sil Silcox has started 21 to 22. Junior college games showing a lot of poise himself. Loss of one. Second and 11. Silcox will change the play at the line of scrimmage. What do you think? It's an option? Maybe. Here comes Colorado. Three step drop. They throw it across. Pass is complete. Right into the hands of Marcus Brunson. They wanted to get the ball to him as much as they could. He's been quiet. That was a nice throw and a good call. Yeah. Wheeler was really far off, which is why he, he, he audible to a, a 90, which is a three-step drop, like you said. But you're going to see some blitzing inside here, and it's a nice job by the Wyoming front of picking up the blitz. And it was a good decision by Silcott. Here you're going to see Phillips come again, but he runs in to that big offensive lineman, Jeff Smith. Smith, who does a good job of blocking him. Third down and one ball on the 18. Jenkins. Yeah, I don't think he got it. Going to be close. Well, we'll see now if Dana Dimmel, if it's fourth yeah, down, he goes for it. I don't think he can. You got to kick the field goal here if you don't make it to get yourself up 15 to 10. Then you're forcing the other team to at least get the field goal. Not going to beat you. They've got to score a touchdown then. And I think they're going to call a timeout. Yep, the officials are going to measure. But what do you think, Ron? You think they made it? I don't think they did. It looked like Jay Korth and uh, Jenkins may have collided. There's a lot of confusion, I think. Yeah, right you are. And it's about a yard short. Okay, Dana, you told us you don't like kicking field goals. Weedle is not coming in the ball game yet. They're bringing in Wendell Montgomery. Julian Hooker, the tight end, stays in. Mike Patolo, the fullback, comes out. 
You know, you got to respect Dana Dimmel here. He said we're going to go down there and try to win the game, and that's exactly what he's doing here. Well, his defense has held Colorado, and I'm sure that has a bearing on it. And the officials blowing the whistles. We'll listen in. And Colorado will burn their final timeout. Their last timeout. Boy, oh boy, the backs are against the wall for the Buffaloes. You know, and it looked like Colorado didn't have enough or the right defensive people in the game because you saw Andy Kristoff and Rick Neuheisel talking there. And what Wyoming was going to do, they lined up and they had no backs in the backfield. The back motioned out, so there were no backs but the quarterback in the backfield, which tells me it was probably going to be a quarterback sneak again. Which they've already done on fourth down, and they were successful at it. Rick Neuheisel says he wants to be a kinder, gentler person to John Hessler. We saw him on the sideline. So he remembers back in 83 when he played Georgia, and he kind of came apart of the seams of that football game. He said, you know, I remembered that. Well, it's tough. And like he said, you know, you've got to separate yourself from being the quarterback coach, which is very difficult, and the head coach. And he's a great coach, and it, he, I think this young guy has got a great future oh. in this game, and uh, he's done wonders with this program that was very established, obviously, when he took it over. But it's hard to continue a great program also. He is one of our favorites. Right now has been the Wyoming story. Coming in as a 15-point underdog, they've controlled the lines of scrimmage, just what they wanted to do. They wanted to run the football. They've done it. They didn't want to give up the big plays, and they haven't. Oh, Wyoming has been very physical, and it's been extremely obvious. And they did that against Ohio State, too. Right. They felt they beat Ohio State, like you said before, on both the offense and defensive line. Still Cox is by himself. Let's see if it's a quarterback sneak. Fourth and one. Oh, boy, he better have a surge because he may not have gotten it. Nice defensive effort by the Colorado front. Well, that's been a strong tendency, like we talked about before, of what Wyoming does in those situations. So Andy Kristoff obviously called the defense in preparation for that. There's A.J. Kristoff, defensive coordinator, and he doesn't like where the ball's being spotted. Which tells you it's probably a first down, but here you're going to see the surge of the offensive front of Wyoming, but it's a wonderful, wonderful job by the defense of Colorado, and Hannibal Navy is just trying to throw him back because you mm. never know what the official sees, and it's a first down. I guess we have to say the proverbial sportscaster phrase, it's a game of inches. It's a game of inches, and I'll tell you, it's a game of guts right now because Dimmel made a gutsy call right there. Let's look at his reaction. <laughs> First down. No, no question, right? So he's got a good view of it, too. He was an offensive tackle as a player at K-State, so he knows what that situation is like. First and 10 on the 17. On the option. Marcus Brigham just takes a seat just inside the 20. He'll lose two on the play. Ron Merkerson on the tackle. A lot of people would criticize that call there because an option, you got a chance to fumble it if the quarterback gets hit or if the receiver gets hit while he's catching the pitch out. So that was a great play by Murkison that time, but a little risky for the Wyoming offense. I'd just pound this thing up inside here a little bit more if I were then because Colorado has got zero timeouts left and they can't stop the clock. And there you can see the red zone defense. Opponents had six opportunities and they've scored six times. On second and 13, Brigham again, maybe picks up two on the play. Brigham over 100 yards, 25 carries, 104 yards. That's his third consecutive 100-yard rushing day. And that's the definition of balance that we were yeah. talking about at the beginning. Run it and throw it. But they want to run the football this year up in Laramie because what it does, it plays into the hands of your defense. If you got a great defense, run the ball, don't take a lot of chances on offense, and you're probably going to be successful. How good is it for a coach to know you've got a guy like Weedle on the sidelines, too? Real good. <laughs> Especially now. On third and 11, they need to get to the seven. Bring him right up the middle. He has Pater. Touchdown.
What a job by that offensive line of Wyoming. Tip the hat to them. Well, it was a draw play, and it was a wonderful, wonderful call down there because everyone in the ballpark was expecting some type of pass. Boy, Todd Witten, the offensive coordinator, was head coach at Tarleton State last year. Now on Dana Dimmel's staff, gutsy calls. The extra point is good, 106 straight for Corey Weedle. He is 116, or 117 of 118 in his career. Longest play of the drive was the touchdown run. 13 plays. You're going to see some real speed here by Brigham getting up in there, seeing the end zone, and getting in there. Wonderful run, but I'll tell you, I agree with you. That was a great call again by the offensive coaches of Wyoming. And that's a happy guy, and he ought to be happy. And Wyoming now leads by nine. What's important about that is now Colorado needs two scores. And there's only 429 to play in the ballgame. And you know, you play right into Wyoming's hands here now because Hessler's going to have to throw the foot Ball, and this team does a great job of rushing the passer in passing situations. So for Wyoming, they got exactly what they want. Who would have thought? Weedle set to kick it away. Kelly. And Barnes back to receive. You know, it's a debate about whether buys are good or bad. Oh, yeah. Sometimes you lose your edge when you have a buy. Again, fall off the team. You know, going back to buys, especially early in the year. Right. You know, they had only played two games, and then you have a bye. It gets you out of your rhythm a little bit of the season. And yet, you talk to Demo, and he says, well, we've got 13 straight games with no buys, and he loved it. And in between, he's got to fly to Hawaii to play the University of Hawaii over there. So, you know, it's how you, you make it. But I think sometimes buys can be very, very di disruptive. Side winding kick. Going to be taken at about the two by Kelly. He's a speedster. Look out! Crosses the 30. Shaking and bacon. This could be. It could be. To the 30. Goodbye. No penalty flags. Unbelievable. We said special teams might be the difference, and they might still be the difference in this game. Colorado has had nothing but problems the last couple of years with their kickoff return game. In fact, a year ago, they were last in the nation in kickoff returns. They have not returned a kickoff since October of 1980. They've only had one plus 50 return in that span, and that was 89 by Mike Pritchard. That record is now erased. 99 yards. Jeremy Aldridge to tack on the extra point. This one ain't over yet. Colorado needs to get one more guy on the field, and they do. Snaps good, holds good, and the kick is good. Ben Kelly out of Metter Lake, Ohio, just outside of Cleveland, electrifies the crowd that was on the verge of saying adios. You know, in the spring game, he returned the spring opening game kickoff for a touchdown also. But you got to credit the guys blocking in the wedge right there of getting some good blocks because no one really touches Kelly on this entire return. And that's a lot of nice hustle by Colorado players getting downfield but also not clipping anybody. And Kelly is fast. He's small. He's elusive. But he is fast. And speed kills in the kicking game. And that was a wonderful example of it right there. And that gives this Colorado football team a huge, huge lift. That's not a Colorado record, however. But it's close. That's going to put a smile. Okay, okay, put your coaching hat on now. There's 410. Coaches say a lot of time. You onside kick it now or just try to let your defense do the job? Well, I don't think you can onside kick here because if you do and Wyoming recovers it, they're in great field position with that field goal kicker. So I think you got to have some confidence if you're Colorado in your defense that they can stop Wyoming's running game because Wyoming is probably not going to throw a lot of passes in this drive. But the biggest problem with the scoreboard right now is Wyoming's got two timeouts. Colorado has zero timeouts.
That was probably Weedle's worst kickoff of the afternoon, which is unfortunate because he's played so well. Didn't get all of that football. You know, going into the game, it was the opposite. It was the Colorado right. kickoff team was worried about the Wyoming kickoff return. And they're going to try the squib kick. They practiced. They almost had it. Penalty flag is thrown. This is something they worked on in practice Thursday and Friday. They try to pop it up in the air and just let Kelly run underneath it. But the problem here, Ron, is look with the field position oh, yeah. that they're going to give to Wyoming. And you have Weedle. <laughs> Kelly got a hand on it. Couldn't bring it in. Free kick out of bounds. Kicking team. First down. Spot of touch. Looking at it again. There's a lot of different ways to have onside kicks. This is one that they try to bounce up to Kelly. Now, my question here is, number one, Kelly doesn't look like he's running that hard because he just went 100 yards on a kickoff return. Get another guy in there that is a little fresher, number one, but also get a bigger guy in there so he can go up and maybe catch the ball. Again, strategy that backfired for the University of Colorado there. 6 to play. Kelly trying to get a little win. 19 to 17 is the score of the ball game. Tell you how bad things are going. The scoreboard's even raw here at Folsom Field. So it's 20 to 17. Yeah, and they're giving Wyoming an extra point. Yeah, oh. Effort, effort. <laughs> yeah. So now the Colorado defense has to, as the coaches would say, bow their necks. Yes, they do. And, but what, what's got to happen with this Wyoming offense, they, they just got to get two first downs. If they can get two first downs and obviously hold on to the football, they'll win this football game. Jeremy Silcox still in a quarterback. Wyoming 219 total yards. Colorado 266. That's our situation. Colorado out of timeouts. Billy Mau Mau from the defensive tackle spot. He has been rather quiet today. I think what's happened a little bit, though, is that they've run away from it. It seems like they've always gone to the other side, the Olsen side, because they just didn't feel physically the matchup of Demetrius Hamilton against Mau Mau was the one that Wyoming right. could win consistently. So they kind of run away from this guy, and that's what happens when you're a good football player. Sometimes you don't get a lot of opportunities. If you're a good football player on offense, they can throw you the ball or hand it to you. But sometimes on defense, they run away from you. Pick up of one inside of 320. Silcox fakes. Out in the flat, pass is complete to Julian Hooker, the tight end. I tell you what, Dana Dimble's playing this game to win. He's not just trying to hang up. Well, you got to play the game on your toes. And everybody says it's easy to talk about playing aggressively on defense, but offensively, you play aggressive by the type of plays that you call. That's playing aggressive, throwing the ball on second and down. Obviously, you would have liked to see Hooker stay in pounds, yeah. you know, so the clock continued to run. But he's just being aggressive with his play call. And Wyoming is going to burn a timeout with 3.16 left to be played. They're facing a third down and two. We've had a lot of explosions here in the fourth quarter. First of all, it all started with Wyoming. And it was Marcus Brigham right up the middle, 18 yards for the touchdown. And it looked like that might be a nail in the coffin. Now, that almost looked too easy, but so did this play almost look too easy. 99 yards for Ben Kelly, doing a nice job waiting for guys to come down and help him out. That's really a hard thing to do, to adjust your speed like that, to pick up the blockers, but, but he did a magnificent job of that. And as I said before, the blockers did a great job of not blocking someone from behind or committing a foul by using their hands, which happens on kickoff returns all the time. I'll take an opportunity to say uh, thank you to my broadcast partner, Artie Jagantino. He's moving over to the cable side of the Big 12 pack. We'll call you cable guy from now on. Yeah, right. <laughs> You're so good. You're big time now on yeah. us, huh? <laughs> Artie, it's been fun. We'll see you down the road, I am sure. Absolutely. Dave Lapham will be joining us as Dave switches over from the cable package. And yeah, there's not enough food in the Big 12 for Lapham. <laughs> not a chance. 
You know, last night, Colorado went and saw a movie. This is their tradition. They went and saw The Edge. Yeah, you know, coaches take teams to movies to psych them up. They want to go to violent movies sometimes, and The Edge was kind of a survival movie. Well, I'm not sure that's always works, and I'll tell you why in a minute here, but The Edge was a violent movie that they, they felt would help the aggression of the Colorado team in this game. Wyoming 5 for 15 on third down situations, third and two. Bring them. Barrel in his way, close to the 45. That's where he needed to get to. And I think he's going to be short if it's where they're spotting it right now. Well, I'll tell you, Ron, it's going to be real, real close. The big question is, though, what do you do if you're Dana Dimmel here? You know, that's a long field goal, so you're not going to kick the field goal. No. I don't think you want to punt. So, to me, you got to go for it here because if you punt the ball, the chance of a bad snap or a punt block is always there. He said the farthest he'd let Weedle kick is if the ball was on the 40. Well, first down, new point. It's a new point. Well, anyway, I was telling you about movies. Well, in the Rose Bowl in 1985, we're playing Ohio State, and we went to the movies, and we were going to see some shoot 'em up movie, and we couldn't get in. So we ended up going to see Terms of Endearment <laughs> the night before the Rose Bowl against Ohio State, and that was the best defensive effort we ever had at USC in the Rose Bowl. So I stopped believing in those violent movies after Terms of Endearment <laughs> was our movie before our best defensive effort ever, maybe at USC. A touchy-feely team. Yeah. <laughs> you guys could be on Oprah. 2.50 to play in the ball game. Two tight ends. Jenkins, the lone setback. Wyoming leads by two. Jenkins stacked up after a pickup of one. Mau Mau out of the stop. Well, you're probably going to see that play the next three plays here yeah. because the clock is running down. It's 2.30 now, and it's only second down. Colorado, no timeouts. Wyoming has one left. And the clock ticks, 2.22 to play. And, you know, coaches work on this all the time. When you're ahead, you're behind in a two-minute drill, and it's tough, and there's a lot of strategy that goes into it. But the most important thing is that your players know what to do in these situations. They're going to stay in two tight ends. Patola with a fullback. tester for both teams. Troutman behind Hessler. They'll keep it on the ground. Troutman to the 23-yard line. Brian Brown out of step. Aldridge has already missed one field goal and he's made one. Right now it would be about 29, 39-yarder. Coming into the game, his longest was 34 yards. So, again, this is not a gimme here for the Colorado kicking game. Second and eight, 120 to play. Hessler, play action across the middle, has a man complete! Darren Cheverini down to the one-yard line. 
there's the mismatch we were talking about with the smaller corners. Colorado better stop celebrating here and get lined up because they got to get the ball and kill it so they have some time to get the play called that they want. 21 yards. Wyoming didn't want to give up big plays. They have here in the last four minutes. Hessler has 15 to snap it. One minute left. First and goal on the one. Hessler. Not in. I don't think he's in either. Second and goal. What Colorado has got to do now, they've got to get to the huddle, they've got to kill the ball, stop the clock, and get the right play called here. They cannot afford to have a mistake here in terms of alignment or someone not knowing what the play is. And they don't seem to have a sense of urgency right now. No. They better hurry up a little bit. And he's checking the play at the line of scrimmage. 30 seconds left. Troutman banging around down to the one yard line. 25 seconds. Colorado's going to have to hurry. No timeouts. Now Hessler has to run up and get people up. They're standing around. Ten seconds left to play. Hessler's going to have to kill this in a hurry. With five seconds left in the ball game, Colorado is going to attempt the field goal for the victory. Well, Dana Dimmel wants a T.O. Well, this is exciting, <laughs> to, oh boy. To, to say the least. But like I said, this is not a gimme for the Colorado kicking game. But it just, again, I think, emphasized the fact that the turnover statistic, Ron, is the biggest statistic in all of football. It is going to be Jeremy Aldridge. The ball is on the one. It'll be an 18-yard field goal, equivalent of like an extra point. Now, the reason Coach Dimmel called a timeout there, he wants to make sure he's got his best block team in the game. But number two, he wants to give Allridge a little bit more time to think about the kick, to psych him out a little bit, and maybe, maybe, maybe get that psychological edge if there's too much pressure on Allridge. Hessler has been down a number of times today, but he picked himself up to hit Darren Cheverini on the play. That really has set this game-winning attempt up. Well, it's a great throw here by Hessler. He drops back. There's no pressure on him, and he just delivers the ball right on the money. And Cheverini goes up and makes the big catch. Only the third time in the red zone for Colorado. Ball is going to be spotted at about the nine, making a 19-yard attempt. Final play. Five seconds left. This is for the win. ago we would have said get the dirt and start throwing it on the coffin but Ben Kelly electrifies everybody Brigham coughs it up Hessler hits Cheverini Aldridge with a field goal and there's one second left here is the kick again and watch Rick Neuheisel and Aldridge just drills this thing right down the middle it's a great kick perfect that takes a lot of pressure off of that man because this would have been a long week around here mm -hmm. again if they had lost to Wyoming. An absolute heartbreaker for a Wyoming team that fought tooth and nail and quite frankly outplayed Colorado today. And a tough one for that young man, Marcus Brigham. A win is a win. No style points in football as far as I know. No, there aren't, but you know, you just... This is the second heartbreaker now. I mean, 